gets underway and a wonderful view out of the start hut at the top of the hill and there is the view of the rock jump and the Rusi rock in the finish area pack schedule for you today six gold medals to be decided in the super g three in the women three in the men and as you can see three categories in each vision impaired standing and sitting and we'll have all of those races for you one after the other athletes gathering at the start area at the top of the hill right on a service road that uh, is convenient for the ski technicians and the athletes to access the start but a fascinating day of racing ahead of us yeah, great conditions, as we've mentioned already. The snowpack has set up very hard overnight. Temperatures in the snow, well, 11.3, a little colder earlier on, minus 13 recorded at the very top. Air temperature just a shade below zero, but most importantly of all, for those ski technicians on the basis of the skis, very dry air once again. We're seeing a relative humidity in the low 20s. That makes for a, ve a very difficult uh, setup for the skis. Women's Super G, vision impaired. The weather, as we can see, is uh, Martina Votza cranks up the boots. She will be getting this first race underway. And the vision impaired. And her guide there, Milenia Sabidusi. And here is the start list. Nine competitors from seven National Paralympic committees. And the favourite and defending champion goes number three, Henrietta Farkasova of Slovakia, a 10-time Paralympic champion. <coughs> Can she add yet a, another medal to her already impressive haul of hardware that she has from major tournaments that is the entrance to the canyon coming out of the high tuo bowl and a pattern of alternating red and blue gates set by daria capelli the uh, head coach of the chinese uh, paralympic team looking up the high tuo bowl the gates snake their way down very steep and icy uh, part of the track, the hydro bowl, but a key part of it need to take the speed out of that section onto the canyon section, which is uh, relatively flat, and therefore no speed can really be generated. We're almost ready to go. Martina Vodza will get us underway. 17 year old and there is the buzzer that will bring her into the gate day two of the Beijing 2022 Paralympic Winter Games and Super G Day and the women's vision impaired competition Martina Vozza and Yelena Sabedusi of Italy get the women's Super G underway. Very important turns here right at the very beginning. The first four gates really critical in the Super G. Remember, running here onto the Silk Road, the girls and the guys have very little gravity to work with for the next 10, 15 seconds or so. So those first four gates, absolutely critical to the outcome of the rest. Oh, Vozza has gone down. Yeah. It looks like not too heavy a crash. Vodza suffering a bit of equipment failure. The ski wasn't fully loaded. The athlete not really standing on the left ski and the binding releasing with the shock of trying to set up. You can hear how solid the snowpack is here. And if the skis are allowed to bounce and chatter too much under the body, then sometimes the binding's released. That's a really unfortunate start for the Italian pair. So Martina Vodza. There's a DNF. 
And a big disappointment for the Italian. The German coaches await their athlete, Naomi Eva Listo, who goes with bib number five. It's uh, Mena Fitzpatrick and Gary Smith of Great Britain, but good to see Voxer go back on her skis. Yeah, they'll give uh, the Italians a, a moment or two to get down to the next exit point. So you heard the start referee saying to the British pairing that uh, they're going to double the interval. So we'll wait another minute and a half or so until the next athletes are on the course just to allow the Italians to get safely down and off of the racing line. Yeah, service road just a little bit further down the track on the left hand side that will allow them uh, access to the bubble that comes up from the bottom and uh, Sabadusi, the guy just uh, taking Vatsa down yeah, it would have been the uh, run run jump and they will exit skiers left just here so safely off the track we can get ourselves back underway shortly. Good. But far less wind today. Ideal racing conditions for the skiers at the top of the hill. And the one minute call given to Fitzpatrick and Smith of Great Britain with bib number two. Patrick took a clean sweep of medals in Pyeongchang. She won the slalom, came second in giant slalom in Super G and third in Super G in the, or Super Combined as well. So uh, all three medals. Looking to open her account here in Beijing. Mena Fitzpatrick of Great Britain and her guide, Gary Smith, with uh, bib number two, the next out of the start hut. And here we go, then. Smith leading the way. Much more aggressive and confident start from Mena Fitzpatrick today compared with uh, day one's downhill. Now here running out onto the flats. Billy Smith, the guide, has to be careful. He doesn't let the gap open up too much. An extra factor for them to have to manage is the difference in mass. Gary obviously a lot heavier than Mena, so his momentum will take him more quickly across the flats. So an extra part of the, the guiding job there, just taking an extra check every now and then over the shoulder to make sure the visually impaired athlete is right on your tail. Coming to this second time split. As Fitzpatrick will now enter the high 12 bar on 37.96, coming in at 88.7 kilometers an hour. Very turning through the high toy bowl compared with yesterday's down on technical skiing, suiting the men of Fitzpatrick's style. This is great work from the British pairing here. Men are showing very, very clean edge sets here, looking for the touch, showing confidence here. Strong work. 58.2 as they head through the canyon. Listen to the conversation between the two. A couple of gates from home. This is the final terrain change. And Fitzpatrick tucks for the line. And will stop the clock at 118.79. And we'll just have to wait and see how that stands against the remaining athletes at the top. I don't think we need to comment too much on that run there. You can see it all in the, the emotions displayed in the finish area. Good work from the British here. Henrietta Farkasova of Slovakia, the 10-time Paralympic champion, the defending Super G Paralympic Winter Games champion, the reigning world champion a force to be reckoned with in the vision impaired alpine skiing and already nearly 
tenths of a second up on our leader Fitzpatrick. Yeah, Frank Silva very clean on those top four turns. And to yeah, my it. vision, she's trying a lot of pace coming off the end of the Silk Road. An inside ski mistake there would have slowed her just a little. But uh, no, no, no shaking of the confidence. Still very strong and right on the tail of her guide. Real close connection between the Fakasova and Michael Turnbull, her guide. And you can see that 1.73 now, the right side of the clock. It's a good connection, yeah. And we had having to deal with spray off Michael's skis, however, there, and that's a little bit of disturbance, but she's brim full of confidence. Oh, no! Oh, runs Thanks wide, brush. catches the right-hand ski on the gate and is down. Oh, mm. what a fall for Farkasova. That was a really big hit. Let's hope she's OK. She's lying very still on the course here. This is a concerning moment for everybody. That was a very, very heavy hit on the gate. And obviously with the visually impaired athletes, they're focused on being right on their guide's tail and uh, the gate coming at her completely out of nowhere. Well, by the looks of things, oh, he's gone for the... Uh, there's one ski there. Yeah, but I would suggest she's OK because yeah, he's left her. Relatively speaking, yeah, let's have a quick look again. Yeah, just at the very last minute, Henrietta realised she'd run a bit too wide. Farkas over crashing into that red gate. But, uh, yeah, her guide's done a great job there. Checks, first of all, that she's OK. He raced back up the hill to where she was lying. Uh, now, good to see she's back on her feet. So that's a big relief. That was a heavy hit, no question at all there. Big, big fall and a big, big surprise as well. Yeah, the, you know, Super G, it's, it's full of surprises. That's the key thing about this particular discipline. And it doesn't matter which category we're talking about. Downhill, the speed is very high, but there's at least a couple of days, a couple of runs on the course beforehand. And we saw that in day one in the downhill. Everybody looked like they had the measure of the course. Today in Super G, all that's happened is they've had about 45 minutes to inspect the course. So the athletes have slid down through the pattern of turning gates, inspecting the terrain, trying their best to memorize every little ripple every bump every swing from left to right and there's so much can go wrong when you launch at race pace and uh, you, you, you only properly understand what the pace of the course is going to be like when you've pushed out of the start gate and that's a huge disappointment for Henrietta Farkasova because she was she was skiing into gold medal position I think from that run well that's the sight you want to see after a heavy hit like that is the athlete the skier coming down on their own and uh, Marcus Over will be back for sure, but uh, a big hit, big fall for the overwhelming favourite. But not her day today. But already we can see the attrition rate. Three skiers out, the start hut and two DNFs. One equipment failure, one fall. Yeah, once again, as I say, it's, it's not that much of a surprise to see big surprises right at the beginning of the, the field um, because all the following skiers, again, it doesn't matter which category, they will be able to use what these girls are doing, girls and guys are doing in the, in the early, with the early bib numbers to get that gauge on how quickly the course is running. The snow, although, as we mentioned earlier, is very dry, but as the sun has been on it now for about an hour and a half, small amount of free water coming present and it looks like the course is, has sped up a lot compared with how it was in inspection, just with that extra bit of moisture coming free from the snow. So something extra for the guide and athlete to the guide and the VI athlete to consider when they're getting the, that all important first feel in these first opening four turns, and then again out through the Silk Road on the first gliding section across the flats. the youngest athlete in the VI field. Gets the 30 second call from the timing official. <laughs> Alexandra Rexova of Slovakia, the 16 year old. And her guide, Ava. 
Sakakova. Uh, off and running, and they are trying to track down Mena Fitzpatrick of Great Britain, our current leader. Confident start from the youngster. Looking good coming out of these top turns, and green light there. Point four, the right side of the clock for Raksova. And good connection between her and her guide. And she comes down to the one one jump and the second time step. Yeah, good work by the guide. She's doing plenty of checking. Just a quick note, you'll, those of us who uh, have been following this very closely, uh, Rexova had Martin Makovnik guide her yesterday. This is perfectly within the rules. You don't need to keep the same guide. But she's certainly keeping good pace. There's another green light. Yeah, point nine, the right side of the clock. And now in this very difficult turny section of the high 12 ball, has she maintained the green light coming out of this ball? 58.2 Fitzpatrick's time and Rex over. 2.18 the right side of the clock. That's excellent skiing. Now gliding skills at a premium, even though it's turnier than day one's downhill. The lower section of the course, the, the canyon, the gully is a canyon onto rock jump there in the distances, we call it. It's very, very flat, so the skis must run cleanly over the snow. Rex over, tucking for the line, 118.79, and she's in gold medal position, 1.78, the right side of the clock. An excellent ski from the 16-year-old. Oh, that's something else from such a young talent. That's great. She's absolutely delighted. The pain of them, quite rightly so, in the finish area. That was a strong run, especially, as I say, with a relative lack of experience in the speed events. Noemi Eva Aristo of Germany and Paola Elia Brenzel, her guide, the next to go. Fourth in the downhill and giant style in 2018. She had a uh, PCL injury in September of 21, so on the comeback from injury in 6-8, the wrong side of the clock in Rexova's time. It's a, it's a decent start up on the top, though, for Ristal. The, the pair of them were a little bit too wild, I would suggest, yesterday in, uh, in, in day one's downhill. And um, now this is a more measured performance. The gap stretching just a little here as we come to this next terrain breakaway. Guy, yeah, a quick check over her left shoulder, and she stands up to catch some air, slow herself down just a little bit, so it rests out and catch up a little bit. To a point one one now, the gap for this goes 75.7 kilometers an hour into this very difficult high throw ball section. Get a real clear indication here of how much swing, how much lateral movement across the hill. Dario Capella, the pro setter, has made. It's a very technical part through here. A little stumble from this time. She regains her balance, and the clock now 4.45 in the red. Good tough position here from Ristow. She gets the back almost as flat as she possibly can. Allows the air to flow over. Could do with getting her hips down just a little, though, to increase the aerodynamic advantage, improve the position. Into the final pitch here, though, going for the line. 117.01, Risto's time. It comes and goes. Third place for the time being for Risto. 5.3 off the pace. For just four remaining. This is the lower section of the high toy bow, and uh, just out getting the ski sideways a little more than would be ideal, bleeding a bit of speed off there, but a confident run nonetheless. Linda Lebond and Ulle Gilots of Belgium. And Lebond, silver medalist in the Super G from Lillehammer in January of this year. 57 years of age, but already only two seconds off the pace of our leader, Alexandra Rexova, the 16-year-old from Slovakia. I hear a lot of talking between Guy and Racer. Obviously, they, they have different staff. What sort of thing do the guide say? 
Well, the, the, the guides are, uh, this particular guide um, is, uh, G-Lot is just, just saying swing, swing, left, 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 right, 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 and keeping an eye on where her athlete is behind her, so that they, they're, they're trying to find the rhythm of the course. It's a bit like a, a, a primary dancer leading their partner in the, on the dance floor. Somebody has to take the lead, and that's really what the guide's job is. They need to get a feel and a, an appreciation for the rhythm and the swing of the course back through, the, through, their, through their headset to the athlete behind them so they can get a feel for where they move their speed up and have a confident chance of following in, following right behind their guide. The Bond, nearly eight and a half seconds off the pace of Rexova. Feeling it her way down. The time, the time of Rexova, 1.17.01, that's already gone. The Bond. Tucks for the line, 126.98, fourth position for Le Bon. And Super G. Yeah, guiding wise, the distance was a little bit inconsistent, I would suggest, but uh, again, another athlete safe in the fin, couple safe in the finish, that's good to see. Millie Knight of Great Britain with bib number seven. Silver in the Super G in 2018 and a bronze in the Super G at the World Championships in Lillehammer on course. Come on, come on, come on. Nice and clean. Uh, guide is Brett Wild and point four eight, so very much in touch for Knight. Yeah, Knight making some very strong turns up on that, that first four gates and good pace across the flat section as a consequence. The deal is getting the body a little bit more over the skis, get down out of that way to try to carry the speed. A little bit of a gap opening up between Wild and Knight as they come to the second split time. And Millie Knight now finds herself behind the same time split as that interval one, so a chance here for Knight. Good work here by Brett Wilde. A bit of technical coaching going on as well as the, the pure guiding. Then Millie to stand on this on her outside ski. And a lot of encouragement here from Brett Wilde for Millie Knight. Really could do with closing the gap between his athlete and himself just a little. He's got to be careful here that he doesn't run out too far, too fast onto the flat. Already lost, lost a lot of time through that. High to a bowl section over two run. seconds. And a chance of a podium. It used to be inside 122.31 for Knight. And here comes the finish line now. 117.01 has come and gone. But Knight looking for the podium and she's there. 2.38 off the pace. Yeah, the high toy section just uh, really got her skis a bit too sideways. You know, I think possibly the gap opening up between the guide and the athlete on the entrance to high toy maybe hurt her confidence to be able to roll solidly and confidently onto that outside ski. But nonetheless, third place right now is pretty good going. She'll be happy enough with that. Judah yeah. King and her guide, Jan Han Han, are at the start right now, 20. One at 21 years of age, but uh, really dialed into the track in day one on the downhill. So she'll be hoping okay, to repeat some of that, but already a second off the pace. It doesn't look quite as comfortable as uh, as, as in yesterday. These are nice tires and very clean on the outside ski. She came into view from the, from the next camera. And, uh, yeah, looking more confident as the ground begins to tip away. As I said earlier in the presentation, the first four turns are set very difficult indeed, so we need to be brim full of confidence as you come out the start to tackle this day. First down time, now 0.68 off the pace. And uh, the guy, Han Han Han, also with an impairment. Good, to, good turns through the, the high toy goal, I have to say. This is going to be a very important split time in terms of uh, us getting a guesstimate of what the podium is eventually going to look like. Needs to get down now out of the air and get that aerodynamic tuck position. One and a half seconds off the pace. That is good enough for a podium if she can maintain that gap or even find some time. Zhu Daqing from the People's Republic of China looking to disrupt the podium. 117.01 has gone, but where can she slot in? There, 2.29 off the pace. And Zhu 
finds the podium once again. And slow mo picks here, higher up on the course, not the best of turns. Lower down was really where she brought her A game through high toy bowl. That's where she made up some pace. And uh, yeah, great, great lower section from the Chinese pair. Even Nico, Greece, and her coach Dimitros Profensas, the next to go. 21 years of age, first Paralympic Winter Games for Nico. And she carried the flag at the opening ceremony, and her opening turns see her from nine feet off the pace. Yeah, the turns were solid enough, but not, not really attacking, not looking quite so confident. It's her first outing on the speed hole, and uh, maybe that's, that's part of what's going on there. But midsection off the state road, she's looking, looking, yeah, but more solid. You can see the shoulders hunching forward over the knees, trying to get down out of the air and stay as close as she can to her guy who's just ahead of her. It's all this time. Okay. 3.08 off the pace now. You've done a good job in closing up the gap here, down through the high toy ball. That's going to enable her to get the rhythm, get the swing, the feel of these tires. She's drifting a little low below some of these gates, so not able to take advantage of the pitch and make as much speed as we possibly could have in the line, which is all important for this coming flat section. Nico has a lot of time to make up through this canyon section. It's in her first oh, yeah. Paralympic oh, Winter oh, Games. Okay. Oh, the try to get to the bottom. And the time of uh, our leader Rex over has come and gone. Nico will stop the clock at 1.25.25. Goes into sixth position. 8.24 off the pace. Solid turns through the high toy bowl. And uh, yeah, a good opening statement, I think, for her Paralympic account here on day two. So confirmation then of the women's Super G vision impaired and Alexandra Rexova, the 16-year-old for Slovakia, wins her first Paralympic Winter Games gold medal. Mena Fitzpatrick of Great Britain is second. And Zhu Da King of the People's Republic of China is third. Well, a fantastic race, and now we have the recognition ceremony for the athletes who will pick up their medals later on on day two at the Yansing Medal Plaza. But they do get their moment here in the finish area with the recognition ceremony. Mother Fitzpatrick of Great Britain leading the athletes and guides out along with uh, Gary Smith upgrading a bronze medal from 2018 to silver in 2022. Good ski from her, but it's all about the 16-year-old Alexandra Blexova. What a ski from her. Jida <laughs> King. A bronze medalist in the T12 200 metres at the 2012 London Paralympic Games now has a bronze in the women's Super G vision impaired in, in the Winter Paralympic Games. Mena Fitzpatrick of Great Britain and Gary Smith pick up the silver medal. Excellent performance from the British pair. Gold medalist and Paralympic champion representing Slovakia. Alexandra Rexova of Slovakia is the Paralympic Winter Games Super G champion of Beijing 2022. Brilliant ski from Rexova. A hero. 
Farkasova skied out with a big fall, the overwhelming favourite. But she stepped forward to take her hero's place on the top step of the podium. And a really, really strong ski from Alexandra Rexova. Beautiful morning up at the Yansing National Alpine Ski Center. As we turn our attention now to our second category. The women's Super G standing start list. Uh, the Paralympic Winter Games Beijing 2022 and Molly Jepson of Canada will get us underway. And we have 15 competitors from nine national Paralympic committees. Molly Jepson of Canada with bib number 10 gets us underway. Super strong turns from Jepson, broom full of confidence here, no fear whatsoever. 13.24 the early splits. And certainly to my eye, carrying a lot of pace across the flat section. Coming down now across the Ruby Sugar Jump into roller coaster. Yeah, she's really traveling quickly. She needs to anticipate what's coming up over the brim here. Oh, that's great work. Folds the knees up, pushes forward, maintains contact. Next split shows 38.20. Most importantly of all, as far as I'm concerned, these are very, very clean turns, very strong athletic work from young Jepson. So yeah, silver medalist in the Super G at the World Championships in Lillehammer in 2022 and 57.12. She exits the Hytro Bowl into the canyon. Good tuck position from across the flats. Skis look to be running well. And yes, this is a uh, Pretty strong pace setting from the first female in the stand-up category. Jepson crosses the line in a time of 118.69. And we'll have to wait and see how that stacks up. Nice blend of skills there, shown in our slow-mo by Jepson. Very strong work from the Canadian. Laura Valenao of Romania was the first athlete in any sport to represent Romania at the Winter Paralympic Games when she took part in 2010. Raced again in 2014, but Miss Pyeongchang carried the flag at the opening ceremony for Romania, but Valianu into her run and at the first time split she finds herself just over a second off the pace of Molly Jepson. Valianus, Valianus rather is an LW4 skier, prosthetic limb and um, you can you can tell one side she's the hill favours her a little more than the other um, so an extra degree of difficulty and I have to say very confident looking scheme from Valiano. She took a few years off but it seems that she's kind of grown in confidence from that and uh, come back here to the games. Yeah, looking, looking strong. Coming into the Hydro Bowl at just over 80 kilometers an hour. She's got a lot of time to make up on Jepson, our leader. Yeah, it's a big ask. Molly Jepson had a, a real screamer of a run, particularly through this high toy section. But it's, it's turned out to be very icy today, not just the aggressive artificial snow. Oh, she's and oh, Valiano can't quite make that very difficult red gate. She's not quite certain if she's uh, passed it cleanly or not, so she continues. But that was definitely uh, wide of the gate, so this will be a disqualification, unfortunately, for her. Valiano continues, but that miss gate will mean her time will not stand. And disappointment, but just running wide on the exit of the ball. 
And we'll, go, we'll see it again here. She comes in pretty clean, but just can't quite get enough weight over the outside ski. The upper body a little bit too far inside. The ski runs a slightly wider radius than she would have liked and goes outside the gate. In the heat of the moment, I have to say in her defense, it's very difficult to tell. Ever our show of Sweden. Next out the start hut, bib number 12. World champion in slalom and parallel. She missed the speed events in Lillehammer because of COVID. And now is 0.48 the right side of the clock. Strong top turns for sure and a green light and the first split for the young Swede. Aggressive line coming off the flats and now onto the pitch on exactly where she wants to be. Takes a little bit more space, goes outside the blue line, set herself up, and that allows her to grow that advantage. Three quarters a second, the right side of the clock as she enters high throw ball at over 100 kilometers an hour. Got to hang on tight here in these turns. We've seen problems on this next section. Here comes the long sweeping right foot turn. She's hit the entry perfectly, gets in the tuck early and out like lightning. And 1.31, this is an excellent run from Eva Arsho of Sweden. Uh, very clean work through high toy bowl, carrying good pace. It's all about the ski prep now. She tucks down, rolls over the rock jump and heads for the line. 118.69 is Jepson's time and she's comfortably inside it. 1.76, Arsho with an absolute rocket of a run. Yeah, that was, that was very quick indeed. Let's have a quick look back. Look how clean she is on the edge. There's hardly any snow coming off at all. Sets it up beautifully on the entry to the high toy bowl. Doesn't even break from the top position. Bib 13, Michaela Goslin of Canada. As a bronze medalist at the World Champs in slalom back in January of this year in Lillehammer. And those postponed World Championships and she's trying to chase down at the time of Eva Arsha of Sweden. 0.43, the wrong side of the clock from her point of view, the first time split. It's dropped a little low on the end of the Silk Road, coming over the little break there, which is called Sugar Jump. Speeding up again through the roller coaster, but not just quite on such an attacking line as I think she would really, really like. Ice causing her a bit of trouble as she passes the next split. 1.24 off the pace, 96 kilometers an hour on the gun. Our leader, Arsho, was over 100 coming into the high throw ball. Yeah, and the Canadian battling against the hill rather than playing with it. Here's the final splits. 2.62, so he needs to get to work on these gliding skills through this section of the canyon. Snow is fast down here, but unless the skier can translate smooth yet powerful movements into that glide, then it's difficult to make pace. 2.71 on the wrong side of the clock, third for the time being. Canadians are happy with that. Here's the exit from the high toy bowl section. Look at this spray coming off the tails of the skis. Just not quite as clean as she would have liked. Alana Ramsey of Canada in the start hut, Bib 14, a bronze medalist in the Super G in Pyeongchang in 2018. And five times world championship medalist as well. And she loves to go fast. She loves the speed events. Uh, such a strong program, the Canadian Paralympic Committee field. That's a great start, point three six for Ramsey. Yeah, picked a straighter line than anybody else up on the top part there. Oh, gets bounced a little at the end of Silk Road, needs to tidy this up, that's a shame, she can't, good pace. Was that a result of the straighter line at the top? Um, I think more, she just got, a, maybe, maybe concentration broken, she got taken by surprise, coming over one, one of these rows, 
Remember, they've only had an inspection, but she's not, she's not letting that affect her. She's still got a green light there by point three four. I'm trying a straight line through high toy bull. I don't know that it's working as well as it did on the top. We'll have to wait for this next split to see. Two hundreds she lost between intermediate one and two, and at intermediate three, oh, it's gone red. She's lost nearly a second and a half through the high toy ball. High toy is so crucial today. It's very, very tiny in there, and if you don't come in on just the, the sweet spot and, and with a nice high line out to your left, then you're going to be battling against the gra gravity as you drop through those uh, bank turns. 116.93, the time of Arsha. Oh, she's found oh. time in the ball in the canyon section. Brilliant. She's found nearly a second, a whole <laughs> second. Can't believe it. <laughs> That's a great surprise. Everybody's in shock. Alana Ramsey, what a great glide she did across the canyon. Through here, the, not the cleanest of turns. This is a little part up near the top where she got taken by surprise by the terrain dropping away. But look, sticks under the arms. Brave, confident scheme from Alana Ramsey. What a run. Zhang Meng from the People's Republic of China next on track. Only took the sport up six years ago, but certainly showed it in day one in the downhill that she's in tune with this mountain. And she's got the green lights at the first split by point one two. Yeah, using every bit of the home snow advantage, it does help a little to, or more than a little to know the hill, particularly for Super G, as we've said already, only a short course inspection, no training runs on this course, and now at full race pace, so I'm coming over the next breakaway, it looking turns. for that early entry, but just a little bit lower than she would have liked. The turns look clean, and it's resulting in a big green light now, 1.68, the right side of the clock. And looks to be carrying it well through the high toy bow. Quite a straight line, drifting and punching the skis past the gate. In very straight on this last two, but a quick switch. A bit of a drift on this long turn. Oh, look at that time split now. 3.11, the right side of the clock. This is excellent from Zhang. The People's Republic of China have never won gold in para-alpine skiing. And this would be... a. A real turn up for the books. 116.84 is under real threat. This is going to be a big run from Zhang. She's in by 3.3 seconds. <laughs> It's been some race so far for the standout women's category. Zhang absolutely delighted with her work, quite rightly so. Let's have a quick look back. Clean turns and just, you know, being quite gentle in these high speed turns. A nice soft touch allowing her to, to really fly across the surface of the snow without having to fight against it too hard. Andrea Rothfuss of Germany, next out of the hut, silver medalist four years ago in Pyeongchang. She's been on the podium at every Paralympic Winter Games since 2006. Can she find a run here to keep that uh, record going? Rothfuss was going well on the Silk Road, but just a little bit late on the entry to the, ex the exit turn at the end of the Silk Road section. Bad place to lose momentum because although it steepens up a little, it's not the steepest part of the hill. This is better again here. But again, just a little bit late with the switch. Didn't get the left ski loaded up on the entry to the high toy bow. And now battling against the line. 3.97, the wrong side of the clock at the entrance to the hydro ball, and just has a little stumble on that patch of snow that is uh, gathered and then runs very wide, but just makes the red control gate. Now she's got to keep the skis quiet, stay calm here, just minimal edge angle to bring her around the curve. The skis must run absolutely parallel, and we've seen just sometimes the tips opening a little wider than the tails. 13.54, that's long gone, and she's sliding to 8.81 off the pace. 
and a shake of the head for Rockfuss. No, she knows the headers and high toy bowl cost her dearly on the following flats. You know, she's not she's not a heavy enough built athlete to be able to pick up momentum across the flatter section. And here at the end of Silk Road, this is where one of the, one of the other very costly errors was made. Anna Maria Ryder of Germany. The next to go hails from Garmisch Parten Kirchen. And her parents are both trainers and scientists at the Olympic Alpine Ski Centre. She was third in the World Championships in the Super Combined a couple of months ago in Lillehammer. And also in 2017 in Slalom, but she's pumped 3 3. The wrong side of the clock of Zhang, our leader's time, but that's in touch. Yeah, she's certainly still in the game. That was a good top section in the first four turns. She's got the skis running clean. She needs to keep her body as low as possible here. The speed is pretty high, remember, so the drag force generated by the body falling through the air is very high. The more you can do to minimize that without compromising what you can do with your legs, the better it is aerodynamically. That throws now to 2.4, just over two seconds lost in that, that section. And the turns aren't as clean as you would like through high toy bow. It's a case of uh, damage limitation, I would suggest now. 2.4 is now 3.9, so another second and a half goes for Ryder. Well, we've seen a second game, a .99 in a second game through here. And our leader Zhang found that much in the uh, canyon section. But her time of 1.13.54 is safe from Ryder at least. And 5.09 slides into fourth position. with the anxious wait. Quick look back at uh, Reader's run here. Uh, watch the outside ski bounce, 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 bounce one more time and then it picks up just towards the end of the curve. Very difficult. Marie Bachet of France, the defending Super G champion from Pyeongchang in 2018. Eight times a Paralympic gold medalist. She won four golds in Pyeongchang, but 0.42 already a lot of time to make up on Zhang, who was lightning down here. You know, you could see Maria has been absolutely faultless on this run so far. I would suggest she's maybe just gone a little bit rounder than she needed to on those top turns. A slightly farther distance travel translating to a red light at the early split. And that's now grown to a second, travelling at over 100 kilometres an hour. It's the quickest we've seen on the gun coming into the high throw ball, and these are really quick turns from Boucher. You need to be from Boucher. You can see her factor is 100%, so uh, her impairment doesn't really gain her any advantage against the clock. So she really has to ski at the very, very top of her abilities if she wants to make an impact on the podium. Well, she's definitely skiing inside the podium here. It's separated by 3.39, but 1.13.54 is the time that is interesting. Boucher, that has come and gone. She'll be on the podium. She's second, 1.43 off the pace. It was an excellent run from Boucher. It really was quick. Yeah, she's relieved with that. She deserves to be on the podium with the effort she put into this run. Have a look at these turns. Super clean. Look at look at the arc the skis following. It's uh, so clean. Hardly a, a flake of snow coming off the skis through those high-speed turns. Yes. Japan in the start hut now. Hondo Ami. Third in the downhill at the World Champs in... 2019, the 25-year-old. What can she do on Super G Day at these Paralympic Winter Games? Trying to chase down Zhang Mengqiu from China, who is our current leader, but already has over a second to fight. Yeah, it doesn't display the, ag the aggression that translates to a, a, a straighter, aggressive, quicker line on those top turns. 
Strong skiing there nonetheless. Technically, can't really be faulted. Straighter here, clips the gates. And works hard to gain height. Well, that's the quickest on the gun at 103, but it was too hot for her to handle. She ran really wide coming into the ball. Yeah, exactly. She just got caught out a little by the pace. Didn't quite get the ski loaded up early enough. You saw this in day one's downhill. Come into the high toy bow. You come in with no vision of where the course is going. And another rather lucky escape for Hondo as she exits the high toy bow and out now onto the canyon flats. Just making that control gate. And certainly trying at the max of her capacity over the final pitch now. Zhang's time has gone, so has the podium. In eighth position, 6.38 off the pace for Hondo Ami. Uh, she's disappointed. I think that un slight uncertainty of the ideal line on the lower part. Here's where she drifted wide. And you can see you can see the, 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 far, the tracks further to the inside, closer to the blue flag. She was a good four or five metres off of those. So uh, a big chunk of time went by her there. That's a shame for her. And there's our current leader, Zhang. Petra Smazova of Slovakia on track. Her fifth Paralympic Winter Games has a couple of medals, a bronze from the slalom in 2014 and a bronze from the giant slalom in 2010. Didn't finish the Super G in Pyeongchang. Good solid top turns, maybe just could uh, try to be a, a little bit more aggressive, take a bit more risk with the line go ever so slightly straighter, but getting the skis carved out cleanly is key in Super G. It's not always possible to carve every single meter of the way down, no matter what your ability as a skier is, but keeping them as clean as possible, that's one of the primary tasks in this game. Made a World Championship debut in 2004, so 18 years she's been representing Slovakia at major championships. Uh, age no barrier in Paralympic alpine skiing. We saw that in the men's and women's downhill competition on day one. Smart's over now, 11.32 adrift on the final split. Tucks in and just tries to let the skis glide as smoothly and as gently and as quickly, obviously, as possible as she comes through the final flats through the canyon. Smith's over then. Looks up for the line. The podium is gone. And she will slide into 10th position. 15.88 off the pace. Kamiyama Noriko of Japan in the start huts, making her Paralympic Winter Games debut at the age of 49. Yeah, got a de debutant start here. Not looking so confident with the higher speed in these top turns. 2.26 off the pace for Kamiyama, who is also a uh, para-athlete in swimming and shooting. Rather different environment for her here on the slick slopes of the Alpine Centre. Doing a good job, though, considering her lack of experience on these long boards. A little uncertain again of the line here. Remember, as the course sweeps around to the skier's right, it's impossible in the previous gates to see exactly where the gates are, are, are going to lead you or where you have to drive your way down through those gates. So again, that course inspection earlier today, one of those skills that takes a number of years to learn to a high degree of precision, particularly for Super G. So again, that lack of experience uh, damaging Kamayama's chances a little bit. 10.91 on the final split.
So here comes Kamiyama past Rusi's rock on her right hand side over the rock jump. And she'll see the finish for the first time and she'll stop the clock at 127.73, 10th position. 14.19 off the pace of Zhang, our leader. Yeah, a real good effort physically there from the Japanese skier. Zhuo Xiaoxin of the People's Republic of China, 23 years of age, took up the sport in 2016. It's a 1.94 off the pace at the first split, and that has grown now to 8.9. Good line into high toy blue, just unable to get clean, clean purchase on all well, that's a better one, the red gate turn, and that blue also a bit, a bit cleaner, feels the skis working well for her, looks confident enough to grab the tuck for a microsecond between those gates, and now tries to sling her body as low as possible for the flats. There's a little bobble on that penultimate gate coming out of the high toy ball that has seemed to have caught a number of the athletes in this standing category. Yeah, I, I hope they clean that up. I think there's some loose snow left over from the slip slip crew. Is uh, the exit the course there, or should they switch from one crew to another? 113.54, 12 position, 16.82 for Grohl. Vanessa Gaskova of Slovakia, next out of the start hut, just 16 years of age, her first major tournament for Slovakia, and she took up skiing at the age of eight, and 2.12 uh, off the time at the first split, that's up to 8.22. Yeah, definitely, you, know, you have to think about the success of the Slovakian program overall when you think about their, their older, more experienced skiers and then these youngsters they're bringing through. This young lady, Gaskova, clearly here for big game experience, as the coaches and uh, selectors call it. So I think we we'll keep an eye on her as we watch her career grow through the coming years. 13.47 at the final split doesn't really flatter her skiing because I'm seeing, I'm seeing some very strong turns from this young lady, somebody to watch for the future. Vanessa Gaskova, four gates from home. And she will finish her first Paralympic Winter Games race. 18.06 off the pace, 13th position for Gaskova. Yeah, she can afford a smile in the finish area. That was a, that's a confidence building run for the future. Ali Johnson of the United States of America, the last racer in this women's Super G standing competition. 27 years of age in her first Paralympic Winter Games and 3.62 off the pace at the first split is now 12.11 as she enters the ball. Well, she doesn't look so comfortable on those very icy tires. I have to say, you know, when you watch course inspection, and the, 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 this run is very, very icy. Yesterday's warm temperatures in the afternoon, allowing a lot of water to come to the surface of the snow, and the very cold temperatures overnight. Remember, it was below minus 15 through the night, so there's some real glassy, like water ice on sections of the course. So for these less experienced athletes, it really is a big challenge here in the women's standing Super G today. Should make it safe home from that one. Not many major challenges, just this one final turn to the skiers right where they can't really see where they're going so again taking that direction from the inspection she's got that well nice and tight and a nice short straight line to the finish line 113.54 and delight for johnson as she crosses the line 14 position for her 25.96 off the pace Competition we have had and a home win, a first Paralympic Winter Games gold medal for China.
Here are the standings, the final results of the women's Super G standing. Zhang Mengyu creating history for China, taking their first Alpine Paralympic Winter Game gold. Boucher of France is the silver medalist, and Alana Ramsey of Canada, the bronze. Now, time for the recognition ceremony. Oh, what a moment. This is for China. And Zhang, who uh, showed real promise in the downhill on day one, really dialed into the course, looked at home, looked comfortable on it. And she has brought that again to the mountain on day two for this historic moment. Bronze medalist representing Canada. So in bronze medal position, as she was in 2018, it's Alana Ramsey of Canada. Silver medalist representing France. The champion from 2018 is the silver medalist in 2022, Marie Boucher of France. Picks up the silver. And Zhang Mengyu from the People's Republic of China is the women's Super G standing Paralympic champion the Beijing 2022. Ladies and gentlemen, show your appreciation for the Beijing 2022 Paralympic Winter Games medalists. Oh, what a moment for Zhang, huh? Incredible, and you can see, understandably, the emotion etched on her face. Yeah, the whole Chinese team will be delighted with this. They put a lot of effort into preparing for these home games, uh, training both at home here in China and abroad, across Europe and North America, across the last four years. Uh, all credit to the whole team and a very well-deserved victory by Zhang. Women's Super G sitting on day two of the Beijing 2022 Paralympic Winter Games. And there are just eight athletes from six National Paralympic committees at the top of the hill. And the world silver medalist from earlier this year will get us, uh, or the world champion, sorry, will get us underway, Forster of Germany. Annalena Forster of Germany will get the women's Super G sitting underway at Beijing 2022, the reigning world champion in this discipline. And a chance to see this track from top to bottom. Come on! Asking herself to go quicker, 13.33. And the speed will start to increase as she comes over this terrain change. Over sugar jump. This is looking good accuracy-wise for Annalena Forster. She's right on the money, I would say. It's quite hard to predict exactly where the sit skiers are going to want to run. But very important for them, obviously, with just a single ski. Very important that they have absolute precision with their choice of line. 14. 0.56 her time coming into the hydro ball at a speed of just over 83 kilometers an hour. You can hear and see the skis drifting ever so slightly. Forster set up quite well, but didn't quite get the execution of the first couple of turns in high draw. Absolutely right. Just <laughs> over a minute as she comes on to the flats in the canyon section. 
And the German ski technicians will have done an excellent job with their equipment here. So really what happens across these few seconds is down to them. Nice flat ski from Annalena Forster coming over the jump. And Forster will stop the clock. 1.23.84. The time that everyone, Elaine Fort, she's not sure. A little shake of the head. Yeah, she knows there were one or two turns, could have been cleaned up a little. She'll have to watch and wait very closely. Muraoka Momoka of Japan, bronze medalist at the Paralympic Winter Games in 2018. Yay! Oh, she goes down this really steep top section, gets a real nice first turn through that red gate. A little drift on the entry to the following red, dives in strongly on this blue. Now that's the end of the main pitch. She's got to now carry that pace as best she can across the flat apart. A tenth off the pace of Forster, our leader. Uh, Murahoka is the captain of the Japan team here in Beijing 2022. Looking to deliver another captain's performance. Oh, and she, that's a good recovery. Yeah, she's right on the limit. The ski barely on the snow here, but... I have to say the line very precise indeed. Muraoka. Does she get it? Split. Oh, she's bang on. It's absolutely level pegging with Forster. And she's managed to find that tenth of a second. But... Muraoka taking more swing out of this uh, course on the lower part, uh, through the high toy bowl rather. You can see her setting the turn up very high. Has it paid off for her? It's a different oh tactic to Forster. A one minute, point five nine. No, it's uh, 0.19, the wrong side of the clock, but that is eminently gettable for Muraoka through this flat section. Yeah, it's all about ground speed across the snow here and how well the ski will run. Muraoka staying calm, trying to get those rigors off the snow as much as possible, trying to take a little bit of aerodynamic advantage from them on One, the final pitch. 1.23.84, Forster's time. Here comes Muraoka, and she's inside by 11 hundredths of a second. Muraoka, Momoka of Japan, moves into gold medal position for the time being. Oh, this is going to be a close race, for sure. Zhang Wenjing from the People's Republic of China, 19 years of age in her first Paralympic Winter Games. The seventh in the slalom at the World Championships in 2019, but hasn't showed too much form in speed disciplines. And is in touch, 0.23. Yeah, we can expect, uh, I think, the first six or seven of these ladies are going to be very closely packed together. Nice clean turn here, coming through towards the next tip, the uh, next terrain break. A little bit on a very aggressive line, I have to say. She has to be a little bit careful here. Needs to set up or a bit more. Yeah, grabs the line back. I think it costs her maybe a tenth or two on those last three or four gates. 30.56, and the deficit has doubled just over to 0.48. And she winds her way down through the ball. Yeah, aggressive cut. That's a real straight line here. Oh, it doesn't pay off for her, though. She was taking a chance towards the exit of the high toy bill. Maybe just pointing the ski a little too straight, perhaps a couple of gates too early. Well, she was clearly carrying some speed because it was a big mistake and it hasn't cost her that much on the clock. It might cost her more down through here because she's not carrying the speed. And we'll see. 1.23.73, the time of Muraoka, our leader. And Zhang. Oh, not going to be too far outside it. 0.58. Well, that mistake is really costly. Case of what might have been perhaps for Zhang. Absolutely, you know, confidence is everything, and I think maybe she just got a little bit overconfident. She knows, I think, herself exactly what that run could have been looking like without the mistake. Barbara Van Bergen of the Netherlands, the next to go, 43 years of age, competed at the Paralympic Summer Games in Beijing in 2008. In wheelchair basketball, and she went on to win bronze in wheelchair basketball in London and in Rio. 
Very clean top turns from Van Bergen. Calm approach here, relying on precision. Sets up wide, maybe a little wider than she needed to for this next part of the course. 1-4 off the pace at the first time split. And Bergen... Now trying to chase down 40.56. And finds herself 1.19 off the pace. Uh, she, we've seen time made up through the high toy goal. And Van Bergen first three, four turns are good. Strong edge set there, a bit of spray coming off the skis, but she's hanging on to that line as best she can. Again, this next split, the final one, as the exit of the high toy goal. Cooper for the Dutch skier. Oh, she's down. down. Oh, and she'd made time as well, 0.77, but it's all gone now. Most of the momentum bled off with that mistake. She did manage to stay on the course, so her time will count. But again, classic Super G error, just I think not being able quite to manage the pace that under the ski, uh, manage that against their expectations of how they would be able to ski the line. It's such a difficult discipline to predict. Well, Van Bergen, I saw Mendes in the downhill, the World Championships in Lillehammer. Not her day on day two of these Paralympic Winter Games. Four, 4.69 off the pace. <laughs> New Sitong from the People's Republic of China. Next on track, 27 years of age. Very good turns on the top part. Oh, just as I say that, she's going down. Oh, that's unlucky. Hopefully she's okay, but she she really had probably three of the best turns I've seen any of the female sit skiers manage to make on that opening section at the bottom of Whiteface. Look at these, absolutely clean, but the ski just kicks a little for her, goes sideways, and with only one ski under the body, it's very difficult to try to recover from that position. The balance is gone, and it's really just a case of waiting to see if uh, gravity is going to give you a break and let the ski take a, a, a microsecond to point straight down the fall line but unfortunately that wasn't the outcome and uh, Liu is the first did not finish in this women's sitting category for our Super G today Japan, uh, current leader. Nina Forster of Germany in silver for the time being. And Zhang Wenjing from the People's Republic of China in bronze. And there are three races left at the top of the track. Great Britain, Japan and Canada. The podium separated by just 0.58 of a second. And Shona Brownlee of Great Britain, the next to tackle this track. A little bit of a pause after the fall for Liu Sitong. And there is the beep that will bring Brownlee to the start hut. Shona Brownlee of Great Britain, the next to go. Silver medalist of the World Championships in Lillehammer of January 2022. Uh, first Paralympic Winter Games. What can Brownlee find on day two? Very important to have a confident first two gates for Brownlee. He looked very tentative in the start, but now, now that the pace has picked up under her skis, looking, looking much more comfortable. 2.19 off the pace for Brownlee in the first time split. 
And then I think it's uh, zero big event uh, experience prior to this season. So we won't judge just too harshly. Sure, everything's just a little uncertain of the line here. She didn't compete in the downhill in the previous days, so a little unfamiliar perhaps with the terrain here. It's a complex hill, lots of terrain breaks, lots of blind crests where the skiers really need to know exactly where they're going. Brownlee, 9.55 off the pace. She's also part of the British Armed Forces para team and also races triathlon. Finishing second in the ETS4 event at the 2021 British Paralympic uh, Triathlon Championships. A little bit more swing in these turns than uh, Brownlee really would have liked. Can let it afford to dive in now and try to point it straight through these next ones. Again, just giving the course maybe a little bit too much respect. Again, uh, uncertainty caused by uh, a lack of big game, big match experience, if you like. I know uh, Shona Brownlee will be a little disappointed, I think, with this run. Not far from home now, just got to keep it going nice and steady across the flats here. Don't try to bleed off any more speed than necessary. Just one more right-handed turn here to bring her over the rock jump crest, and she should be within sight of the finish. Brownlee over the final pitch for the line, 123.73. And in her first Paralympic Winter Games race, she's at the bottom. 24.5 off the pace of Muraoka, our leader. Tanaka Yoshiko of Japan, the penultimate racer in the women's Super G sitting. And the 46-year-old, her fourth Paralympic Winter Games. She debuted in 2006 in Turin, but didn't race in Pyeongchang in 2018, and she's a second off the pace at the first time split. And yeah. she comes now to the second. That experience showing uh, big dividends, you could say here. Looks to know exactly where she's going. 5.97 now, the time gap to Aruba uh, Oka. Not looking quite so confident down through the high toy bowl. The ski you can hear drifting sideways in the top part of each of these turns. Course flattening out now ahead of her. She can afford to just relax a little and let it run. 9.26 off the pace for Tanaka. And she runs her way down through the canyon. Very, very narrow just there on that blue gate. And then opens up a little bit before the uh, finish jump. But her compatriot, Moroka Momoka, still leads the way and is guaranteed a medal, as is Annalena Forster. As Tanaka stops the clock, 11.96 off the pace, fifth position for Tanaka. You got this, Kamaluzier. Katie Kamaluzier of Canada, Kamala. the last racer in the women's Super G city. And Kamaluzier is out in the netting. And uh, that fall coming before the first time split. And uh, hopefully she is OK. Quick look back at uh, what went wrong for Kamaluzier. Oh, just got a little wide on the red gate there. The terrain falling away to the skier's left. It's a, an off-camber curve, if you like. So very important to commit and, and fight for that line because for the later runners, there's a little bit of debris, some soft snow that's been brushed off by the previous runners and by the course workers. And as the pace is picking up, and again, with the off-camber nature of that curve, well, if you run out onto that soft stuff, the ski's not going to get enough purchase to get the ski around the curve. So here are the results or here is the result of the women's super g sitting and Moroka momoka of japan does the speed double 
at the Alpine at the Beijing 2022 Paralympic Winter Games. And Alina forced at the defending champion, silver medalist, and Zhang Wenjing from the People's Republic of China in her first uh, Winter Paralympic Games takes the bronze. Four years ago, Forster was in the middle, but this time out, she leads the races onto the field of play for the recognition ceremony. Medals being presented later on on day two down at the Yansing Medal Plaza. But Forster, a well taken silver medal, the defending champion, Anna Schaffel Huber has retired. Claudia Loesch, who took the silver, also not racing here. So a new Paralympic champion. And it is the Japan team captain, Naraoka Momoka, who has won her second gold of these games. Bronze medalist representing the People's Republic of China. Zhang Wenjing from the People's Republic of China, 19 years of age, is a bronze medalist Silver in medalist our home Paralympic Germany. Winter Games. Annalena Forster. Annalena Forster of Germany, the world champion in Super G, gold is the medalist silver medalist the here in Beijing. And the Paralympic champion for Beijing 2022 in women's super G city, Muraoka Momoka. Ladies and gentlemen, show appreciation for the Beijing 2022 Paralympic Winter Games medalists. Great work from Muraoka Momoka. And she takes the Paralympic Super G sitting crown from Anna Schaffelhuber and adds another gold medal to her collection. What an excellent start for Muraoka here in Beijing. Men's Super G, vision impaired in the para-alpine skiing schedule on day two of Beijing 2022. And ten athletes at the top of the hill from seven national Paralympic committees. And it is going to be Eigner who gets us underway. In fact, the first three were the podium at the World Championships in Lillehammer in 2022. And then we have the gold and silver medalists from Pyeongchang going four and five. So uh, this is a really keenly contested uh, medal. And suddenly those who seven to ten will also want their say in where these medals will be placed. But it's going to be Johannes Eigner of Austria who gets us underway, just 16 years of age. Johannes Eigner of Austria will get this men's super G vision impaired underway at Beijing 2022 with his guide, Matteo Fleischmann. And the 16-year-old is on his way. Powerful start from both the Austrian skiers and a very tight connection in these all-important top gates. So far, so good for the pair. Ashman taking a good long look over his shoulder before he runs out onto the flat. Make sure Eigner's right on his tail. So they don't need to make any adjustments. They don't lose any momentum as a consequence. That all important momentum gained in the top pitch. Carried very well across the early flats. Aina, a silver medalist in Giant Slalom and Super G at the World Championships in Villa Hammer in 2022. The World Champion in Slalom in 2022. Coming into the high school goal at 97 kilometers an hour. 
still very icy on the entry to High Toy Bowl. Both these lads got drifted sideways a little. Coaches at the side will be relaying information to their athletes at the top. Running them about the high pace. Wagner a little wobble on the exit, but he's okay here. 51.18, he's very close to that red gate on his right hand side, but he managed to keep the touch. And Eigner now four gates from home. This is a good ski from the 16 year old as he tucks for the line. He will set a time of 109.74. Yeah, a very strong run from the Austrians to open up this men's visually impaired Super G. So now is the pace to beat. Great pictures here. Good guiding there. Check over the shoulder and that gives the athlete the confidence to tuck his arms under his... and pulls under the arms and keep going. Yassant de la Place of France, the world champion with his guide, Valentin Giraud-Moine. The first Winter Paralympic Games for De La Place. Took up Paris skiing in 2016. He competed in the 200 and 400 metres in the T12 class in London 2012. And he's got 0.39 to find on Eigner, our current leader. And the French boy's going out slightly around the top eight. Good pace here as far as I'm concerned. But another check and the guy gets to slow down ever so slightly. Coming off the flats, they're back together again here now. Coming on to the next break. 33.59 and he's now two tenths to the right side. Little bobble as he comes into high throw ball at 98 kilometers an hour. But he manages to regain his balance. Great skiing from De La Place. A little ragged, but fast nonetheless. The connection is strong around this long right through the into the tuck nice and early. And he's still got the green light. He's grown it by four hundredths of a second to lead by 24 hundredths. Okay. Stay calm, stay compact, stay well connected through the canyon section. Oh, almost millimetre perfect with the line, I would say. 109.74, the time to beat. He's outside four hundredths of a second. De La Place won't add the Paralympic gold to his World Championship gold medal. So close. Oh, oh what a so by all of our athletes so far today. Yes, yeah, up De La Place. Look at the angles he makes. That little mistake there. Surely there were 400 lost there at least. Miroslav Haras of Slovakia and his guide Maros Hudik, the next to go. Bronze medal at the World Championships in January this year. He was a bronze medalist in Pyeongchang in 2018. A very experienced pairing here. Let's see what they can make of these top gates. So far, so good. Barely budging from the top position through these turns. Making pace, making velocity with every turn. Only 300s in it at the top. Look at this. Good skiing from Haros. Who carried the Slovakian flag at the opening ceremony. He runs really wide, but look how he gets it back with the pressure on that left ski. Yeah, good experience showing there. Doesn't do anything rash, just allows the ski to run that wide line. There's no point in trying to slam it sideways. That's only going to cost time. 33 to get together here. Wow, now he's a second inside the pace. 102 kilometers now. He's traveling really quickly and right goes up. way out to his left hand side. Very wide on the entry to High Toy Bowl has got the line back. I think it's going to have cost him a little guide now, having to slow down ever so slightly to remake the connection before the flats. 51.18. Well, he's still the right side of the clock and he's got half a second to play with, but he needs to keep this quick. It's all going to be about how much momentum did he really have coming out of High Toy Bowl. The, the final indication as he crosses the line. 109.74, Eigner's time, and the question is, he lost too much coming out of the high throw ball, and he's a half a second the wrong side of the clock, third for the time being. Yeah, those adjustments in high throw ball really too costly, and this is where the troubles began. He ran just a bit too wide on the entry, brought it back nicely, didn't lose too much speed, but covering too much distance, and then, yeah, couldn't, didn't have the extra pace for the flats. 
Jakub Krako and Branislav Brosman, his guide from Slovakia. The first male athlete representing Slovakia to win a gold medal at the Paralympic Winter Games when he won the Super G in 2014. He defended that title in 2018. He's got his work cut out in 2022 to try and overhaul Johannes Eichner of Austria. But 0.14, very much in touch. Now, we've seen small mistakes paid for very dearly. The question is, can the Slovakian player clean? Working hard, keeping the body low. Kranko doing a good job aerodynamically. The turns are just a little ragged for my money. This is better work. Nice and clean here. 33.59, 0.53 the right side of the clock, and that's oh, a great turn. Nails the ankle to the high elbow. Can they keep it going? 118 kilometers an hour coming into the bar by far the quickest we've seen. Great skiing through the high toy goal, translating that speed into very clean turns. On 1.57, the right side of the clock, the two time defending Paralympic Winter Games oh, no. champion has taken the gate. That's a straddle. We won't be certain as to whether he went through that gate or not. That was almost perfect skiing through high toy bowl, but it's all gone by him now. Pretty certain that's going to end up in a disqualification. 109.74, he's going to beat it. He's been it by every second, but I think that's a DNQ. Or a DSQ, I should say. Yeah, here we go. I'll give him a yeah, here it comes here. Yeah, right through the gates. That's, you know, in Slam or Giant Slam, you would call that a straddle. You don't normally see it. Ah, uh, yeah, well frustration right there for Krakow. Now yeah. he knows what that oh, final outcome yeah. will be. Oh, no, that's maddening. They'll be doubly, doubly annoyed when they look at the split times as well. Giacomo Bertignoli of Italy and his guide, Andrea Ravelli of Italy, second in the Super G in the Olympic Winter Games in Pyeongchang. Now, this race is not over yet. Bertagnoli, a very talented skier, most slightly built than the previous guys before him, so he has to make doubly sure down in high toy bowl that he's millimeter perfect and as strong as he possibly can be with the line. Up on the top here, it looks pretty good so far. Next split just coming up. And two off the pace of the first split, and now he's got the green light and in at 107 kilometers an hour. I toy pole, here he goes, cracking turns on the second, a little sideways on the first, but look how straight he's managing to go. He's held a high line, he's going to pick good pace off here. This right through the long sweeping turn is going to be critical. This guy goes about far to the left, and then going very quickly here onto the flats. 1.24, the right side of the clock for Bertignoli of Italy. This is great. Skiing from the Italian, 23 years of age. 109.74, the time of Eigner in the finish area, and Bertagnoli touched for the line and is inside by 0.43. Awesome skiing, excellent tactical and technical execution by the Italian pair. The skiing more or less perfect in high turbo, perfect blend, I have to say, of risk taking and precision on the skis. Great Britain in the start huts, Neil Simpson and his elder brother Andrew Simpson as his guide, 19 years of age. Ooh, Neil very late out of the start compared with Andrew. Let's hope uh, Andrew picks that up and they get back a little closer, more closely together before they run out on the flats. Uh, Simpson very quick here. Seven hundredths, the right side of the clock as he tries to chase down his brother. Yeah, I know these lads well, and uh, I think after day one's downhill, they uh, wanted to make a bit more of a mark in the Super G today. And so far, so good. That game plan playing out very well for the Scots there. 
Very yeah. aggressive skiing, 32.95, and he's pumped four, six, the right side of the clock, and good speed coming into the bar. Got the hang in here, and it's looking good. It's not quite as clean as Bert Daniele, but Neil Simpson working as hard as he possibly can, going from edge to edge, aggressively grabbing the tuck every chance he can. Into the big sweep and turn, here comes the final check. 1600, it's the wrong side of the clock. This is eminently gettable for Simpson. The podium separated by 0.47 of a second. We've got to stay low, we've got to stay compact, try to keep it clean. Come on, get your sticks under your arms and keep aerodynamically efficient. 109.31 Bertagnoli's time, here comes Simpson and he's in by 0.4 of a second. Neil Simpson of Great Britain moves into the gold medal position. Wow. That's a surprise, that's a real <laughs> shake-up for the leaderboard right now. Neil Simpson, what a ski through high toy ball, he was barely in contact with the snow, but look at him go foot to foot, working as hard as he can and taking every little bit of risk that he dared. One small mistake here, almost goes down, but pulls it back just in the nick of time. Mac Maku of Canada, the next to go. The Paralympic champion in downhill in 2018 and third in the Super G in 2014. He's a really decorated para alpine athlete and he'll have something to say here. 400. This is turning out to be a cracking race. Yeah, this will be one of the closest, uh, most closely fought for set of medals and Marquis with such experience. Tough man to bet against, and so far so good for the Canadians. We'd say perhaps just catching a bit more air than necessary with the upper body. We'll see what the speed gun says about that. 32.49, and he's gone, gone. he's gone. Marku goes on the entrance into high 12 bar. He was coming in really quick, was 105 kilometers an hour, and just couldn't get the ski to bite. Now he's just a little bit in the back seat as he tried to roll onto the left foot to bring that, that first turn under control at the entry to High Toy Boat. He's a tough guy, strong guy, so hopefully he's going to be okay. We're tumbling in the fall, but uh, yeah, he's looking a little uncertain on his feet. Came in strong, but just got squashed. Uh, the hip's just a tiny bit too far back, and Biomechanically, very difficult to hang on there. And a lot of pressure, a lot of force has been exerted on the knees. Let's hope he's uh, not uh, aggravated any of those old injuries of his. Oh, the medic. Uh, he's taking his time. This looks a little bit concerning. A bit of course repair work to be done, but we'll have a short gap while uh, Marku catches his breath and just it's a, a bit of a quick medical assessment at the side of the hill we'll have to watch and wait very carefully and uh, fingers crossed that he's okay Simpson just having a chat Okay. Marku on his feet, he doesn't look too comfortable. He needs to find his other ski, and hopefully he'll be able to ski his way down to the bottom. So he's a, a tough competitor, this guy. And uh, if at all, he'll be, if he can at all, he'll definitely be wanting to make it to the finish area under his own steam. Again, get an idea here of just how slick this hill is. This is where the water ice came to this or the water came to the surface and created this glassy surface over the uh, glassy yeah surface overnight so another short delay just till those lads are safely off the course and so we get into our remaining few competitors still no sight of that left ski is that service road at the bottom of the bowl on the right hand side and it's uh, Neil Simpson in the white helmet and Simpson that's uh, at the top of the standings at the moment 
with three left to run. Still no sight of the wayward ski. the track to make this uh, service road on the right which he is now made let's go Paddy Is uh, clear, so the one minute countdown has been given. And Patrick Jensen and Amelia Hodgson, his guide, the next to challenge. Patrick Jensen of Australia and Amelia Hodgson are on track. Jensen in his second Winter Paralympic Games he was 11th in the giant slalom in 2018. And 0.71 off the pace of Neil Simpson, our current leader. Paddy Jensen, good top turns, but maybe going a little, a little rounder than they, than they need to. It's, it's a very difficult uh, blend to get, just how much space to take on these gates to allow you to bend the ski and carve around, and how much risk to take by pointing it straight and risking things going wrong. 94.6 kilometres an hour, 3.4 off the pace. A little bit of trouble there for Jensen coming into the high tall goal, but he recovers it well. Fighting against that very slick surface. Big long right hander now, weight over uh, left hander rather, weight over the right foot. 5.34 off the pace of Simpson as he enters into the canyon. can hear his guide Mia Hodgson calling him all the way down 108 91 comes and goes sixth position for Jensen 1.1625 his finishing time <laughs> A quick look at that uh, long sweeping double gate turn coming out of High Toy Bowl. Nice and clean by Patrick Jensen. Just didn't have the pace on the top section, but he's pleased with his efforts in the finish area. Okay, number nine, Marek Kubatska of Slovakia and his guard here, Zatovikova. And uh, Kubaka in the B1 category, so he has blacked out goggles. Yeah, the only B1 in the competition, uh, Marek Kubaka, really a force of nature, I would say. Factor time, you can see on the left, 60.85. He's skiing with absolutely zero vision whatsoever. So uh, Maria, his guide, they've worked, up, they've, they've worked up this language between them. For the B1s, the guide gets to use... I, I, an outboard audio, if you like. You can hear her with that loudspeaker on her back, so he has a really clear audio cue to follow. Fifth Paralympic Winter Games, and he's got himself a little stuck on the Oh, now this is going jump. to be difficult. This is going to be difficult. If he misses this gate, uh, yeah, they're going to decide to call it that day. 
Uh, it's a bit of a shame coming off that early flat. He just ran a little bit too far to the left and you know, with with no visual cue at all what to, where to follow, it's very difficult, if not impossible, to make such a big line recovery. So we'll see more from him in the technical disciplines later in these games, though, for sure. Yeah, world champion in giant slalom back in 2019. That potentially his strongest discipline. But Maja Kubacka of Slovakia, a, a DNF in the uh, Super G vision impaired. So Neil Simpson and Giacomo Patagnoli, the top two, guaranteed a medal because there's only one left at the top of the hill, and that is Logan Leach of Canada and uh, his guide, Julien Petit. Last minute chat between guide and athlete. Short delay here and the guide making good use of the time. Just you know, an extra opportunity to run the course in their minds again. One more mental rehearsal before they get ready to launch down this top pitch. Good view out of the start hut as you look down this opening path in the gates. Shouldn't be long now. We're running a, a double interval, double start interval for these athletes because they were following the Marek Kubaka, the, the sole B1 skier in this event. So B1 gets extra space and extra time to allow them to make it safely to the bottom. Unfortunately, Kubaka not making it, but the Canadian pairing will close this competition out will be on deck in just a few short moments. Start referee there in the foreground waiting for the call from the finish area. <laughs> You're okay, eh? <laughs> so tough. So tough. Yeah. Not good enough performance for you. Silver medalist today, yeah? Thank you very much. So tough. Yeah. No, awesome stuff. Yeah. Do you want to speak to Neil? He might to go. So Logan Leach of Canada and his guy Julien Petit will round off this men's Super G vision impaired race with the Beijing 2022 Paralympic Winter Games. Logan Leach and Julien Petit on course for Canada, trying to chase down the time of Neil Simpson of Great Britain, who currently leads the way in this men's Super G vision impaired. Leach, 19 years of age, first Paralympic Winter Games, but already finds himself a second off the pace of Simpson at the first time split. the end of Silk Road, cutting good pace, a little bit long the distance between the guide and his visually impaired skier behind. Do we tightening that gap up just ever so slightly? The guy drifting the skis a little to bring some of the pace out of his skiing. 9-9 off the time of Simpson. A good connection here now, too high for a goal, so Canadian boys going back to work, trying to make up some of that deficit. Smooth turns, strong work to this section. 7.35 off the pace 
for Logan Leach. Just can hear Leach confirm every instruction given by Petit. Over the rock jump, 108.91 has come and gone, and Leach the seventh, 9.47 off the pace to round off this men's Super G vision impaired race. So the men's Super G vision impaired race has finished and here are the final standings. Neil Simpson of Great Britain is the Paralympic champion of Beijing 2022. Giacomo Bertignoli of Italy is the silver medalist for Johannes Eigner of Austria in third. So the recognition ceremony for the men's Super G vision impaired will take place very shortly. And the medals will be given out later this evening on day two of these Beijing 2022 Paralympic Ladies Winter Games. Please welcome the Beijing 2022 Paralympic Winter Games medalist from the men's Super G vision impaired. Now to be Giacomo Bertignoli of Italy. Silver medalist four years ago. That's another silver for him in Beijing. But in the middle, Neil Simpson. What a moment for the brothers. And they will be announced as the Paralympic champions and Johannes Eigner, the 16 year old in uh, bronze medal. So, a young looking podium in this men's Super G vision impaired. Johannes Eigner and Matteo Fleischmann of Austria, the bronze medalist in the men's Super G vision in pair. Giacomo Bertignoli and Andrea, Andrea Ravelli of Italy, the silver medalists in the men's Super G vision in pair. And the Beijing 2022 Paralympic men's Super G vision impaired champions, uh, Neil Simpson and his guide, Andrew Simpson. Ladies and gentlemen, show your appreciation for the Beijing 2022 Paralympic Winter Games medalist. A brilliant race, keenly contested, and with so many protagonists, it was Simpson who came out on top. Day two of the Beijing 2022 Paralympic Winter Games, and in the para-alpine skiing, it's men's Super G day and the standing category. And here is the start list, 39 competitors representing 18 uh, national Paralympic uh, committees uh, are at the top. And uh, no defending champion, Kurt Oatway of Canada, not uh, in uh, Beijing. So who can take the mantle from him and crown themselves the uh, Beijing 2022 uh, Super G champion?
Yang Jingyi of China. The 19-year-old will get this men's Super G standing race underway. And Liang, in his first Paralympic Winter Games, was in or showed good form in the downhill on day one. And he'll be looking to try and replicate that on Super G day on day two. Yeah, confident uh, start shown here at the top of the Super G run. Taking risks, knows this hill very well. They've trained and competed here, the Chinese team. So that advantage they have over sight, oh, should be used to their best. But uh, it's all to naught. A big mistake coming into the high toy ball from Zhang Li. Came in with some speed at 107 kilometers an hour. And that was key exit turn. Nice flat skis there going out onto the canyon. Very little of the hill left, so the skiers must carry that momentum from the previous section as best they can. Part of that's running as flat a ski as possible. Over the final jump, Liang inside of the finish. And 109.11 is the time that everyone is looking to beat. Well, he seems pleased with that. A lot of very competitive skiers still to come. Quick look back at some of these turns. Oh, yeah, very tight line through this part, that's for sure. And very clean in these pictures. Hardly a speck of snow coming off the bases and edges of the skis. Manuel, but next of France, the next to go. The 34-year-old. <laughs> Ski and surf instructor made his debut in the 2018-19 season. And the first title, 11.51. And he's exactly a second off the pace of Liang. Good aerodynamic work, good body position over the ski. The dogs obviously skiing with that prosthetic wing on the right side, so he just has to make doubly certain of these turns. And he doesn't quite have so much power available to put down onto the snow. 2.45 as he almost lies down on the snow, but 109 is quick on the go. Yeah, he has to give it absolutely everything he has. He's up against this skier right now with a more, uh, more generous factor. He's in a good time. 2.27, he's found some time through the high 12 ball, but is it enough? Right next to the narrowest part of this rock piece, and three gates from home over the rock jump, and 109.11 has come and gone. Right next, 3.86. He's enjoyed it. Yeah, there's a lot he can be pleased about with that run, particularly in high toy bowl. Very good times indeed. A good close-up look here as to how the recovery skills of the athlete tested to their max. That was so close to being out of the course completely. Bib number 13, Nico Pantsnitz of Austria, 25 years of age in his second Paralympic Winter Games. Big strong push from Prancic as he goes out of the start into the tuck position nice and early. Takes a straight line, he has to try and grab every advantage because he has no, no help from his factor at all. 12.76, second and a quarter off the pace of Yang Jingyi, our current leader. Very good pace across the snow. 
air time. One of the first skiers we've really seen taking air. It doesn't help him on the clock and perhaps a little bit too much speed for him. Yeah, his timing there, he could maybe underestimated quite how quickly he really was going. We've seen that with a lot of skiers. The energy high dog will really turning out to be the critical section on this course today in the Super G. 3.59 now to deficit for Nico and Smith. Really good aerodynamic dynamic position through the canyon. Schnitz now tucking for the line and he'll stop the clock 140 58, third for the time being 5.47 off the pace. No, we saw a clear mistake on the end of the, the high toy ball. Determined look on the face of Pajancic in these slow mo pictures. These are good turns. One, two, three bounces too many before the ski starts to pick up. And that's where a good chunk of his time yeah. was lost, unfortunately. I think he knows it too. Marcus Salka of Austria, the next to challenge the world champion in Super G from Lillehammer in January of this year and a bronze medalist in the Super G in Pyeongchang in 2018. Same sport class as our leader Liang and the first time spent 800 separate the two. Yeah, this will be a real battle of the 9-1 category skiers I think today Salka with lots of experience and uh, exit of high toy bow will be really where his make or break turn comes I think oh he's gone straight here not moving near high toy bow yet that was a good escape from Salka I'm not quite sure what he did but a very uncharacteristic line error it costs him he's 0 0.32 off the pace this needs to be clean and quick yeah, and this long sweeping right foot turn is on his less strong side. He's got to set up well for it, give himself some space. Does just that, loads up as best he can, or get both his feet planted well. Well, he's found time. He's found over half a second through the high throw ball, and Salka has the green light at the last intermediate. Oh, this could be close. He's strong. He's very heavy as Marcus Salker. He's carrying great momentum and pace as he comes to final drop. 109.11 is Liang's time. Here comes Salker. Can he take it away? No, he can't. He loses over half a second through the canyon and he slides into second place. Ah, that's an important scalp. It's still very early on in this competition. Salker can't believe his luck, but yeah, what could I do? He says, cracking turn here, but there, a little wobble, and he didn't quite get the setup as far out to his right as he would have liked for that exit from high toy. Arthur Boucher of France, the next to challenge, bib number 15. He was the silver medalist in this event in Pyeongchang in 2018. Looking to go one better. Just so compact. He's quite a slightly built athlete in comparison to some of the other lads. And he's trying to make even more of an advantage, making himself as small as possible. 0.21 behind after the opening turns, but there's plenty of terrain left in this track. Opens the body up to let his legs push out, extend and flex underneath himself. He needs to get that full body movement to work the skis through those more technical turns. And that deficit has now grown to over a second and he's very, very wide. Uh, another skier caught out by the pace on the entry to high toe goal. He's done a good job though bringing it back, using every ounce of strength to carve those skis back onto the ideal race line. Just has to be calm here and not get too far out to the right. Well, he's found an awful lot of time through the high throw ball. He's 1.13 off the pace going in, 0.37 coming out. And he's a good glider too, so this, this again will be a very close one. Too close for me to call for sure. 109.11 is Liang's tie. Here comes Boucher, it's gone for him and he's into third, 1.25. My ambitions this young gentleman now and uh, frustration as a result caused by the 
relatively small error, but at this level of competition and in this particular category, the men's standing, you really need to be flawless if you want to try to win these races. Connor Hogan, United States of America, next in the hut, bib number 16. Second uh, Paralympic Winter Games for him. More of a specialist in giant slalom and slalom, which is what he raced in 2018. Another real strong athlete, so... And three eight off the pace at the top split. Gives an indication that he has pretty decent speed under feet. Let's see how he gets on coming off the flats. Turns not as clean as he probably like, but not too bad. Keeps driving forward, keeps pushing the weight towards the front of the skis, trying to maintain control over the momentum as the hill drops away from him. 0.38 is going up to 2.77 as he comes now into the high 12 volt. Doesn't look quite as strong as he did down here in the earlier turns. It is very turny through high toy bowl, as technical turns as we see ever in Super G, to be honest. 50 oh, points. Oh, big hit. Mm. Oh, Hogan, that is a big, big fall for Connor Hogan. But fortunately, he's moving. He can't move, he's really hurt himself. Oh, he went into the net, upside down, so he uh, looks to be in a lot of discomfort here. These are concerning moments as we watch Connor Hogan at the side of the course. The course workers are on the case right now, though, so he'll be well attended to. Yeah, he's hurt his leg, he just hurt it. Yeah, he, he went, he, he kind of got high-sided, his feet came together, and then the skis kind of flipped up and whipped him over so he would have got he went down very hard as the terrain flattens off very uh, basically painful place to fall down there so we'll have a bit of a delay here while we make sure that Connor is well taken care of and uh, is taken safely off the track to the medical center for further assessment now that was really painful as you said that when you fall on the flat it's almost worse because there's no slope to take the energy out of the fall and it goes straight into the body and that was really very very painful for Connor Hogan yeah a very big slam I have to say though that despite there being very little snow the safety equipment around the netting the a netting the, the netting that's suspended on cables and tensions really took the majority of the momentum out of the crash you some bounce into the net and like a trampoline that extends back soaks up some of the energy before he dropped back onto the course, but there's no getting away from it, crashing it somewhere around 80 kilometers per hour with very little protection around you. It's a, a serious, uh, serious situation going on there. Well, the medical team would have been stationed just off to the right hand side, so with him pretty quickly. And they will take all the time they need to get him as comfortable as possible before moving him off the hill. <laughs> Hi, Mom. American teammates trying to stay relaxed in the finish area as uh, the racer is attended to after his crash. Everybody with their fingers tightly crossed to hope that any injury isn't too serious. Course workers in the meantime going back to work and making sure there's enough snow to protect the bottom edge of the A nets so they can do their work. And again, back up at the top. Tommy Walsh, another one of the American athletes, keeping himself calm. Coaches are relaying information up to the athletes at the start. Always a concerning time for athletes and coaching staff when one of their skiers has uh, had a big crash. Important that everybody stays calm and the athletes stay focused. Arthur Boucher. Sitting there watching and waiting with Liang Jingyi. 
So still the medical staff working with Connor Hogan. The concerning times for everybody. That's the aerial view of the Yanting National Alpine Skiing Centre and the piece like fingers mm -hmm. spreading out over the mountain. Yeah, it's interesting in it. It's a different look at the Winter Paralympic Games with purely artificial snow uh, blanketing the competition tracks and uh, all the trees without a flake on them in between times. So the, the white piece down the middle, that is the speed track. Over on the right-hand side, you see two tracks. The furthest right is the warm-up track. The one next to it is where they race the giant slalom and the slalom. And then the white piece over far left on that aerial shot, that is the training run for the speed events. <laughs> yeah, it's really an amazing facility we have here, you know, when considered a, a few short years ago, only four years this uh, area has been built up. Uh, they didn't have a, a, a hill with uh, runs on it at all, so an amazing job done by the organizers here in China to carve out these uh, ski runs from this mountainside and run such amazing races really so far. We've seen quite a few crashes, but it's part and parcel to a, d a high degree of our sport. But uh, so far, the, the racing has really been world class, you know, very, very high standard of course preparation and, and amazingly high standard of racing so far, I have to say. So, Connor Hogan has been uh, moved from the track and uh, we wish him the best in his recovery and he's been taken all the way down to the finish area Connor looks to be fully conscious there as he goes down in the evacuation sledge. The ski patrol taking him down, a brake man on the back just to get him down the steeper bit safely. He's, uh, but will be very well taken care of. As I've just been saying, it's a completely purpose-built competition venue, this, and part of that build involves safety facilities and an, an on-site medical centre, so he'll be getting a full assessment in a very short period from now. Here are our current standings in the men's Super G standing. Liang Jingyi from the People's Republic of China leads the way from Salka of Austria and Boucher of France. And as you can see, 1.25 seconds separating the podium. So definitely space for those remaining at the top of the hill to uh, ski onto the podium. And we still have the defending champion, Theo Gumur, to come. He goes with bib number 19. So we're almost ready to go. And as a result, the boots are cranked up. And uh, Sun Yan Long will make his way to the start gate. A moment of reflection for Sun Yan Long as he prepares himself for the Super G Challenge.
Sun Yanlong of the People's Republic of China with bib number 17. Next out of the start hut, 27 years of age in his first Paralympic Winter Games. And we will see him from top to bottom. And his opening turns. See him 1.29 off the pace of Liang Jingyi, our current leader. Just looking at the top surface of the snow here, it's warming up quite rapidly, I'm guessing, out there in the, on the competition hill. It was a little bit of an extra challenge for the ski technicians and for the athletes themselves because the snow will run a little bit quicker. into the high throw bowl he's gone down but not out of the course he can, can continue yeah he didn't actually come to a complete stop the rules in the speed events if you do stop whether you've missed a gate or not you have to pull out of the race but uh, just managed to keep a little bit of momentum going but major damage done to the time you can see that on the split for Sun Yan Long. But set down to the finish he will come and 1.19.39 slides into sixth position after that big mistake. Yeah, here we go. I've just been seeing it softening up just on the surface, but at the end of the high toy ball, it's still very hard indeed. And absolute commitment and precision with the positioning of the body over that outside ski, over the left ski is all important. That's not going to change no matter what happens with the weather now from here to the, remainder, the end of this race. Robin Kusch of Switzerland, the next in the start, had 18 years of age, his second uh, Paralympic Winter Games, his uh, best finish in uh, previous games was eighth in the downhill didn't finish the other events and he's 0.77 off the pace of our leader Liang uh, the nephew of Didier Kouch who represented Switzerland at four Olympic winter games good skiing here nice low body position good support a little in the back a bit of air going under the skis 116.1, that's the quickest we've seen on the entrance into the high toe ball. And he didn't quite capitalize on it as well as he could, miss the entry a little. The damage wasn't too significant. He's back on a clean line and cutting it tight here on the exit. Just makes it inside that control gate as he loses two hundredths of a second through the ball. Push tucks in, he can glide very well, and shows his skis will be excellently prepared. So watch this time closely as he comes towards the finish line. 109.11, Liang's time, that is gone, and Kush is fourth, 3.81 off the pace. where the air going under the skis that would have cost a little bit of momentum a little bit of velocity to Kush. great turns lower down though my toy ball is getting pretty choppy in there we'll have to watch that particular gate quite closely in case it gets more rough Diego Moore of Switzerland the defending Paralympic champion in Super G 25 years of age in the same sport class as our leader Liang Jingyi from China. And at the first split time, Gunnar finds himself with work to do. 0.37 off the pace. He needs to stay sharp. He's on Silk Road right now, but as the terrain starts to steepen up again, we've seen on the speed gun and seen with our eyes, the snow is definitely getting quicker. And the athletes have to be a little sharper as they come over these breakaways to deal with that. They have to anticipate where the course is going a little earlier than perhaps they were expecting earlier in the day. 1.46 off the pace and doesn't have the same sort of speed on the gun. 
Hoitoi Bo, Kumur working well, trying to grab the tuck position through this little straighter section. Sweeps it out. This isn't the strongest side. He does a good job, though. He's found half a second in the high 12 balls. So Gamora, who did the speed double in Pyeongchang, looking to try and get back on the top step of the podium in the Super G. 109.11 is the time of our leader, Liang. And Gamora is going to be outside it. And he's going to be off the podium as well. 2.2 off the pace. Ed looked close there, he did a great job through high toy ball, managed to straighten the line out, but uh, just not quite enough to make up. You can see there, catching a very high line before that blue gate. Tried everything he could, but in the end, not quite enough. Paper number 20 is Li Biao from the People's Republic of China. 23 years of age, first Paralympic Winter Games started para-alpine skiing in uh, 2016. 5-2 off the pace of his compatriot Liang. Strong skiing through this middle part on the exit of Silk Road. Doesn't have the same advantage from the factor time as his compatriot Liang, who leads, so he needs to try to stay small, try to keep the momentum, keep the velocity up as high as he possibly can. Well, he's got good speed on the gun, but it isn't being reflected in the clock. Working as hard as he can, maybe going a little too straight. You see him having to duck his upper body, his head out of the way for those gates that he's clipping. He knows he has to work hard, but I think he's maybe tactically just picked a rather ambitious line through the through high dog ball. 1.15 off the pace for Lee. And compatriot Liang has seen off another challenger. And 116.35. Eighth position for Lee. 7.24 off the pace. Yeah, he had to take risks. Look, there you go. Bang into that gate, trying to cut as quickly as possible. But what's happening under the skis, they're drifting sideways ever so slightly or quite significantly between the turns. Bibnob <laughs> <laughs> 21. It's Canada in the gates and it's Alexi Guimond's. The 22-year-old in his second Paralympic Winter Games. Fourth in the downhill and Super G four years ago in Pyeongchang. Can he get himself onto the podium in Beijing? Well, he's going to have to lay a really good time down because Liang, our leader, was really quick and already he has nearly half a second to try and find. Guimont for Canada, 9-1 factor skier as well, so in terms of the factor time, he's on a, a level footing, if you like, with our leader. And sweet turns here, he's not getting the body as compact as perhaps he could, but sacrificing aerodynamics for efficiency on the skis. 1.17, so in touch. The podium separated by 1.25. And different tactical approach to high toy goal, definitely going for the clean turns. Let's see what the clock gives him here. Well, it's definitely working because it's now 0.25, but has he carried enough speed onto the flats? Looks good. It's all about, well, 50-50 ski preparation now and how the skier rides those skis. Running on the inside edges there ever so slightly, the glide not as efficient as it could be. 109.11, and he's outside it, but he's on the podium. Narrows the gap on the podium to under a second. Quick look back at some of these turns. Great work there by Alexi Guimond, down low. Hans breaking the air around the body ahead of him. Great Super G ski.
bib number 22. Thomas Phil of Switzerland, 35 years of age. And a silver and bronze medal in slalom and giant slalom way back in 2006 on his Paralympic Winter Games debut in Turin. Has 11 World Championship medals to his name, six silvers and 11 bronzes across all disciplines. And he said he's going to go for another year. He's going to retire after the World Championships in 2023. But he's 0.73 off the pace at the first split. Nice smooth skiing through this part from Phil. He gets a switch in quickly for the entrance to the high toy ball. Uh, these turns on the icy stuff, though, not quite so clean as he managed to execute higher up. He was struggling to have done much against the gap on the split time here, I fear. 50.24, 1.99, uh, slower than that split. He is a very good glider, I have to say, so let's not count him out just yet. He's in a good aerodynamic position and quite flat skis, as far as I can tell. 109.11, Liang's time. Phil is going to be outside it, and he's going to finish seventh for the time being. 3.86. High up on the course, that's where he definitely had his, his better turns. Through high toe ball here, just a little ragged some of these curves. Bib number 23, Aaron Lindstrom from Sweden. His second Paralympic Winter Games. Fourth in this discipline, in this race at the World Championships in Lillehammer in January of this year. Can he push Liang close at the first split? He's, well, 1.21. He has no advantage from the factor time. Yeah, that's why you've seen him slinging his body as low as possible, trying to drive the skis in a short and arc around those early turns. Very clean skiing here. Oh. Definitely, the course is definitely speeding up a little. I think it'll only be a matter of time though until the softer snow starts to hinder the racers. But right now, Lindstrom trying everything he can. A bit ragged through the early two turns in high toy bowl, but right now fighting back, working very hard to make the skis arc cleanly. Next 50.24 and 2.97 as he just clips the gate with the outside of his ski and he Gives it a big old wobble. Yeah, taking every risk that he did. 109.11. That is going to come and go for him. Gets some air off the rock jump. And stops the clock. 113.41. Slides into ninth. 4.3 off the pace. Well, I have to say, Lindstrom tried everything he could. I don't think he could have asked for much more from that run. Strong angles and very clean execution in these turns. Exting high toy ball. Here's the close call. And measured that one to perfection. Australia in the start hards. Bib number 24, Mitchell Gourley. Gourley. 30 years of age, carried the Australian flag at the opening ceremony, competing in his fourth Paralympic Winter Games. His uh, best result, the Paralympic Winter Games, a fifth place in the Super Combined in 2014 and 2018. So perhaps he'll be looking forward to that event on day three. Again, no advantages from the factoring system for Gourley. So skiing has to be clean, calm, but powerful as well. So far, so good. Maybe just going a little rounder than he needs to in these turns. Oh, loses a ski, just tipping his body inside the curve at the opening turn. 
of the high toy ball a little further than he really ought to have. Doesn't look to be injured. Oh, look how quickly the ski's going down. Away. Yeah, you get an idea of how steep it is there. You can also hear how slick it is underfoot, how hard the snowpack is. It's rather strange the way that the, ordinarily you would think the, the sun coming on the snow would be softening it here a little bit. But now as the sun's going off this part of the course, I don't think it's going to get any softer in contrast to higher up. And here's where the ski releases. It was just right on the limit. I think the binding probably doing its job just when it needed to, I think, any more adverse forces applied to the skier's legs might have resulted in an injury good news though Mitch is another one of these super tough competitors he's up on his feet and uh, Gourley relatively speaking uninjured a bit of a dent to his pride I'm sure but uh, he'll be back to compete in the following races oh, disappointing for Gourley but his other ski right down the bottom of the ball that's just took off has the tricky job of trying to negotiate this uh, steep and icy high to ball on one ski. Oh, Liang Jingyi, who is out of the start up first, is still in the leader's chair. And what a moment it would be if he could hold on to become the first male Paralympic Winter Games uh, Paralpine skiing champion for the People's Republic of China. Skis retrieved. Now, the reason it carried on is because the, the heel part didn't release, so the brake never got a chance to do its job. So our standings look like this. Liang currently in gold. Salka in silver. Guimond in bronze. 0.91 separating the top three. So that is what those at the top are aiming for. And the first to try and get himself on that podium. Thomas Charles Walsh of the United States of America. 27 years of age. Second Paralympic Winter Games for Walsh. There's two bronze medals from World Championships, both coming in 2019 in GS and Super Combined. He, he caught COVID at the start of February, so he missed official training here. And his build-up has been far from ideal, but he's uh, battled on and he's now on the slopes in the race. Yeah, he's a real tough competitor, Thomas Walsh. Bit of a pocket rocket. Again, a skier with less of a factor advantage, so he has to really ski at the top of his abilities. Uh, that rough section on the top of high toy ball, we've seen it catch probably three quarters of the field in men standing out, and uh, Walsh also falling victim to that rough, bumpy, chattery section and, and on the all important left boot turn. Oh! Just made that as he tried to take as much speed out of the high throw ball. And very familiar with that uh, control gate. Now 109.11 is our gold medal time at the moment. And Walsh slides a tenth, 5.44 off the pace. But what a journey to the bottom of the hill for Walsh. Yu Xiaoji from the People's Republic of China, the 22-year-old in his first Paralympic Winter Games. Oh, 
big, big crash here for the Chinese skier. It's just about to say that the entry in the first couple of turns in high toy go are getting more and more difficult as they become choppier and choppier. New Xiaoji lying at the bottom of the bowl now. Looks to be in a fair degree of discomfort, but hopefully it's nothing more serious than some big bruises. Let's have a look again at what happened. Got pushed back a little in this turn, behind the action, if you like, and hitting the control gate very hard indeed. Didn't really have much option. He had to chop the line off and take that big risk if he wanted to try and stay in contention. These turns come at you fast and furious, but the good news is he's on his feet. Looks to be stunned rather than injured, but uh, looks like he'll make it safely to the bottom of the hill. Now Liang just showing some concern. He was rubbing his right thigh. He's come to a, a rest, but the uh, gate post needing placing. You can see there, it's taken uh, battering at the bottom yeah these uh, gates the poles are the, they're the same style as the slalom gates that they have a hinge down at the bottom where it goes from that little white part where it goes between the two green sections there's a hinge there that allows this the gate to fold flat now in slalom when the skiers are hitting each and every one of the gates trying to find the most direct line that's absolutely crucial but a secondary benefit is if in the speed events or any other events, if the skier's fallen or hits them too hard, then they do fold down. Thing is, with a panel on it, with the flag, as we have in Giant Slalom, Super G and Downhill, there's a lot of a lot of air behind that flag, so hitting the gate hard at a high speed, the gates don't really fold, they, they stay very solidly, and that's what caught out the young Chinese skier there. He had to take that risk, but the gate wasn't gonna give him any favors, and a, a very heavy crash ensued as a result. Twenty-two races remain at the top of the hill in this men's Super G standing competition. The first them, bib number twenty-seven, Jordan Brassin of France. Jordan Brassin of France, the next to challenge the twenty-eight year old in his second Paralympic Winter Games. Fifth in this competition, in this race, the Super G at the World Championships in Lillehammer back in January. He uh, injured his back at the end of last year and he returned to the slopes in November. And, uh, 0.81 of a second to try and find already on Liang, our leader. Yeah, it's a bit of a gap, but I have to say, you know, for an LW4, look, his factor's pretty, pretty minimal. You know, he doesn't get much help. LW4 skier with a prosthetic limb on his left leg. And uh, that really, you know, the factors sometimes don't necessarily reflect the degree of difficulty that's uh, presented by having to ski with a prosthesis. 2.91 off the pace, carrying good yeah. speed into the high toe ball, and he managed it well, didn't he? Yeah, it's the most competitive of uh, the, the last few runners, I would say. This will be a challenging turn from gets the balance almost perfect into that long right footer, and that's not too bad coming out of high toe ball. Bossa, 3.39 off the pace as he tries to get the skis as flat as possible to run over the snow as quickly as possible. And 109.11 has gone, and he is 10, 5.10 off the pace. Oh, you can see in the body language a bit of disappointment when he sees the actual time. I have to say, the majority of that run was very strong. It's just a shame about the final time. Federico Pellizzari of Italy, the 21-year-old in his first Paralympic Winter Games. 1.54 off the pace at the first split. Real straight line through here. Let's see what this next split time gives him. And he's 3.22 off the pace at 109.5 kilometers an hour. Not too shabby coming into high toy bowl. You can see the big chatter marks, ruts beginning to form up there. 
And uh, Pilatari doing not too bad a job. Here comes the long sweeping double. 50.24. And the deficit grows by three, 3,300. Good commitment to the cause. Yeah, he's a, he's a big guy, though, so he needs to get his shoulders lower than he currently is. So try to get his body a little more compact. 109.11. Pelizzari sliding to 13th for the time being, 5.59 off the pace. Some very strong technical skiing from Pelizzari. We'll keep a close eye on him when we get to Giant Slalom Day. Christoph Bernard Schneider of Austria, next out of the start hut, 29 years of age. Missed 10 months last season due to a cruciate injury. Missed 2018 with another knee injury. So uh, his knees have been taking a battering. 4.73 the deficits. It's grown from 1.63 at the first intermediate. Schneider through high toy ball, not quite as clean on these last few turns as he would have liked. And 5.87 now. Get a note. Back to time. Remember the sense. And as the clock runs as a normal stop clock. And 109.11 has come and gone. Bit of air for Schneider. And he will slide into 50 for the time being 8.55 off the pace. States of America next to go with plenty of encouragement from the crew at the top of the hill and just three hundredths off the pace at the first time split. Strongly factored skier so the factoring doing its job here leveling things out and Harahe playing his part is primarily down to the skiing it's not to do with the mathematics don't get me wrong. 2.48 and he's uh, lost his way coming into the ball. Uh, that's unfortunate, you know. His equipment set up there, he's designed to be equally weighted on both skis, and that, to be honest, doesn't give much of an advantage on such an extreme turn as the big right hander in the entry to high toy. All right, out of the ball and into that aerodynamic position. to stay as low as possible, limit the damage if you like. So 1.10.02 is the podium time. And he's outside that and into 13th. 5.56 off the pace for Al Harahe. <laughs> Finland in the start hub now, Santeri Kivari. The 21 year old who was fourth in the slalom back in Pyeongchang in 2018 and sixth in the giant slalom and super combined. So perhaps his strongest events still to come. Yeah, definitely more of a technical steer. A little bit late on the entry to High Toy Bowl, but these are very clean, very short, and well executed turns by Kigeri through the middle part of the bowl. He's in very direct on the double, though. Five more gates still to negotiate for Kivari. And 109.11 is the time of our leader. 110.02, the time for a bronze. Ninth for the time being, Kivari, 4.29 off the pace. Yeah, if he can hang on to a top 10, I think Santeri Kivari we will be pleased with that one. Misawa Hiraku of Japan, next out of the start hut. He made his Paralympic Winter Games debut back in 2006. This is his fifth Games, his best para 
games result was a sixth in the Super Combined in 2010 and in the Slalom in 2006. And point six four off the pace at the first split. Well, factors haven't been adjusted recently. The slightly more advantageous but the biomechanical inefficiencies of this particular setup putting pay to our Japanese racers chances that's a shame there's a strong tech top section from Misawa LW2 skier not choosing not to ski with a prosthetic limb so skiing on one ski obviously you have one side much much stronger or the ability to ski a stronger turn than to the other and the set of the course kind of uh, against him he has to do this this turn on his little toe if you like very difficult to get enough pressure enough weight onto the ski to make it bend and carve when it's chopping away underneath you at such a high pace also there's that little compression isn't there at the top on that left hand so it makes a, a difficult job almost impossible <laughs> yeah yeah uh, the, and the, the couple of gates before there's a little switch where the skiers have to come off their right foot or, you know, switch across to their left and then very quickly try to drop back to their right again. And uh, it's been, it's turned out to be the key section on the course today. It'll continue to be through the, re the remainder of these standing men and into the sitting category as well. So back to the top we go and Andorra in the start hut now bit number 33 Roger Puig Davi from Andorra the 24 year old in his second Paralympic Winter Games had a top 10 finish in the downhill and the Super G at the World Champs in Lillehammer in January of this year, and off he goes. First split, 11.5 run, Niang, China, our leader. Three quarters of a second required for Puig Davi. Trying to get the body as low as possible. Worked out well for him on the top section. Keeping that low position and still trying to work from foot to foot. He's gone in quite straight here. Gets a little bit light over the roller. This is important. Oh, another steer goes down at the entry to high toy bowl. He's not going to bring this one back. And he is out. DNF for Pre Davi. Uh, the skiers that each and every one of them they have to push to the absolute limit, but uh, that section at the entry to high toy bowl, it does demand a little bit more respect than the last few skiers have shown it. They really have to work very quickly. It's uh, just a quick touch on the right foot to bring them across to the left, maybe maybe 30, 40 centimeters further than uh, David managed there. Just at this point, need to get out a little closer to the blue line before you set the edge. Otherwise, this, the this, the course is curve, curving away far too quickly to the right, and so it's an, almost impossible to get back if you haven't taken that space at the top of that turn. So disappointment for uh, Reed Davy as he notches a DNF, the fifth DNF in the field so far. Thirty-second call for Spencer Wood. <laughs> Spencer Wood of the United States of America, bib number 34, 25 years of age in his second Paralympic Winter Games. He raced the technical disciplines in Pyeongchang in 2018, but here in Beijing. He's giving all races a go, apart from giant slalom. He was uh, reclassified in 2019 and made his first World Cup podium two months later when he was third in the Zagreb slalom. 
top section went well. That was the first little mistake, just as we picked him up on the right footer. Softer snow now gives way to the harder pack as he drops onto the steeper section, so it's to sharpen up for this next part. 32.88 is now 3.1 gap, but nicely through the entrance to high throw ball on that left ski. Yeah, good execution there. The words have got through from the coaches, the line coaches on this section. The information relayed strongly to the athletes, and Spencer Wood doing a good job of making those adjustments. Just made that. I thought he was going to straighten up and go the right hand side of that gate, but he managed to find enough purchase on that ski to make it. Just another indication of how close to the limit these guys are prepared to push it. 109.11 is our leader's time, and Wood into the finish area. 113.97, 11 for the time being. Sun Hong Sheng from the People's Republic of China. Next out of the gate, 27 years of age, his first Paralympic Winter Games. Started our Alpine ski back in 2016. A number of these athletes from China started in 2016. That's when the real big push started. Mm. Stays upright. Entrance skate to high throw ball. Yeah, the rope was just a little bit too far towards the tails of the skis to allow the front part of the ski to shovel to drive the ski into the turn. A risky, risky tactic, and uh, I think the risk's not really paying off for soon here today. Riding his way through the canyon section. The podium times have come and gone. And he's into the finish area now. And 120.88. in the Super G. Pip <laughs> 36. In the start huts is Adam Hall. New Zealand and Adam Hall next out of the start gates. 34 years of age, Adam Hall in his fifth Paralympic Winter Games. A champion in slalom in 2010 and again in 2018. And he also picked up a bronze in the super combined in Pyeongchang. Good smooth execution, clean technical skiing by Adam Hall in the top turns. Possibly have afforded a slightly more direct line. Try to keep the clock under his control. 32.88 is the next split coming at the bottom of this pitch. And find himself 4.9 off the pace. Does a fine job though on the entry to high toy ball. Got the rhythm of these very turny Super G curves down through the gully here, almost to perfection.
5.54 now the deficit. Gliding by Adam through this part. Difficult to work on the gap now, not much of the hill left. 9.11 comes and goes. Hall is 115.8, 17th for the time being. For the New Zealander. Tokai Masahiko from Japan. In the start half, the 48-year-old in his third Paralympic Winter Games. He came second in the giant slalom way back in 2006. Missed 2010, missed 2018, but he's back in 2022, and he's four and a half seconds off the pace. Pretty straight line down through high toy goal. It's a, a good way to cut time, but the important thing for the exit here you really need to have built momentum and built speed to carry across the following flats. And I think actual ground speed Tokai will be lacking a bit in that, so that's six points, some gap there that we saw at the final split. I think that's going to go a little... Oh, he's the gate. missed the gate. He's running the downhill line from yesterday a little bit. That's a shame for him, but that will end up in a disqualification. Tokai just missing that gate at the top of the rock jump and get the DSQ for him. Yeah, here it comes just following the exit from High Toy Bowl, picking the wrong one of the red flags there. <laughs> Davide Bendotti of Italy, the next challenge. Second Paralympic Winter Games for him. Two times the Italian slalom champion in 2016 and 2017. And his best result in Pyeongchang was in the slalom. Lovely execution for the exit from High Toy Bowl. Gives himself a chance to get that single ski carving cleanly all the way around that arc. Shooting maybe for a top 10 here. I think he'd be pleased if he could squeeze into the top 10, top 15 even. And Bendotti needs to get this to work because top 10 time, 113.41. And he's going to slide into 80. 7.19 off the pace, 18th for the time being for Bendotti. Oscar Burnham of France, the next to go. Burnham, first Paralympic Winter Games. He took up Paris skiing after Pyeongchang. He was inspired by his compatriot Marie Boucher. Strong skiing here, you can see the skis really clipping as they come underneath his body in the transition from turn to turn. And not too bad coming into high toy ball. 118.9 kilometers per hour on the speed gun, the fastest of anybody on day two. Um, can he convert that to a green light? Not quite, 3.55 on the final split. But we've seen this, we pointed out his, his skis are running very well. So watch this one closely. Burnham getting no help from the factor time over the final jump, and he is going to slide into provisional 17th, 6.21 off the pace. Yeah, a shrug of the shoulders from Burnham. I think he realizes, you know, the, I think the snow's slowing down now. We saw it warm up. And I think in the gully it's getting a bit sticky. Jeffrey Stutz of the Netherlands, next to go, 26 years of age. His second winter Paralympic Games, 0.91 off the pace at the first split. That's a bronze medal from the World Championships when he made his debut in 2017 up on that stage. Nice recovery on the entry to the high toy ball by Jeffrey Stutt. 
It's a little bit late with the transition from turn to turn here, but keeping the work rate as high as he can. Here comes the big long right shooter. He's gone in pretty much on the money, I would say. 3.69. He's scoring you from the athletes from the Netherlands. I think fatigue being there. Beginning to set in body position, not quite as low as I think Stutt would have liked. 109.11, Levitt 4.54 off the pace. Good, take that. Good skiing. So I think for any of these uh, later seeded racers, a, a top 15, top 10 is going to be a very respectable performance. Thomas Gorka of Austria, the next to go, 28 years of age in his third Paralympic Winter Games. 6-6 off the pace at the first split. Walker loses the line ever so slightly, recovers well across the distance of just a couple of gates to sort of 80 or 100 metres or so. Now really right back on the racing line. 94.1 kilometres an hour on one ski and he made it look effortless. Uh, that, that was an amazing turn in the entry to the high toy bowl. It's on his, his less favoured side and uh, that was... That was a real cracking turn. See what the final split gives him. Another wonderful calf turn from Gokha as he tries to battle his way into the top ten. Rather more dynamic position as early as he dares coming out of those uh, technical turns and now across the flat, only the final jump to go. 109.11, that's come and gone, but Gorka will stop the clock at 114.12, 13th position for the Austrian. Some lovely turns in that run. Koike Kakuta from Japan, the 39-year-old who's represented his nation at every Paralympic Winter Games since 2006. He tried to qualify as a para cyclist for Tokyo 2020, but just missed out on a quota spot, so came back to Paralpine. Keeps the work rate up down through high toy bowl. Finds a smoother line on the inside of these ruts. Great low position on the entry and through the middle part here of the canyon, the last flat section. Off the final jump. And... Uh, Okay, stops the clock at uh, 116.43, 23rd position for him. Seven remain at the top of the hill. Um, bib number 43 is Leander Kress, the 21-year-old in his first Paralympic Winter Games. In his first World Championships back in January 2022 when his best finish was 19th in slalom. A little wide on those last couple of turns by Chris, looking a little uncertain of the ideal line or the line he was looking to achieve. to keep it going from edge to edge down through the high toy bowl curves and we're now towards the exit so this is the strongest side for this exit turn muscle burning there as he tries to get into that low position and run the turn out without overloading the ski just squeezing inside that red control gate press tucking for the line the last jump gets the air and Kress stops the clock at 118.32. 9.21 off the pace. Enjoy that one. Yeah.
Jules Segers of France, the next to go, 19 years of age, first Paralympic Winter Games from Léger in the Port de Soleil ski area. And 1.04 off the pace at the first split. And now 4.2 and he's down on the inside. I was about to see Ski Swift got quite a nice light touch. You can tell he's grown up in a, an actual ski resort. Uh, but that light touch letting him down somewhat just on that little transition we've been talking about through the, the uh, amongst the last few skiers. You've got to be strong. You've got to take the course under your command. And a lot of physical strength needs to be delivered to get whatever body mass you can down over that all-important outside turning ski. This is the little switch. It just moments hesitation, too light on the skis here. And the outside ski, bouncing, 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 and the grip and the balance goes from the athlete. And it's a, a rapid exit at the top of the high toy bow and frustration as a result for the young Frenchman. So it's still Yang Jingyi in the winner's seat as he has been from the very first moment. He was number one out the start hut. The sitting skiers just warming up. Still got five more races in this standing category. That is the current leaderboard. Can anybody left at the top of the hill disrupt those standings? James Whitley just waiting for the hunt to go. James Whitley of Great Britain with bib number 45, the next to challenge in the men's Super G standing. And he'll be 24 years of age in his third Paralympic Winter Games. His best finish at a Paralympic Winter Games was 10th in the downhill and 10th in the slalom. Both of those coming in Pyeongchang. Smooth turns from James Whitley on the top part. See what the first split time goes in. Uh, not making the switch from foot to foot just quite rapidly enough there. Yeah, 1.21 off the pace in the first split. That's now grown to 3.69. But that's a good-looking left-footed turn coming into the high toy ball. Yeah, he stood strongly on it and uh, now keeps the work rate up down through the middle part of the high toy ball. These gates come at you fast and furious. Strong, strong on the right foot here, runs it out, just nicks inside. There have been some very close calls on that red gate. And into the aerodynamic position, trying to punch a hole through the air. 109.11 is our lead this time. Whitley will stop the clock in 114.88, 19th position for Whitley of Great Britain. Tyler Carter, the United States of America, 28 years of age, in his third Paralympic Winter Games. Carried the flag at the opening ceremony here in Beijing. But has said he's going to retire after this season. And he was 1.51 off the pace at the first split. Risky straight line through the previous section. Just on the limit, coming into high toy ball. Shave some speed off in that recovery. And the, uh, yeah, the, the momentum, the swing, if you like, from foot to foot to start there after the big sideways move. Difficult to get the next couple of turns clean. And he's drifted too far out to his right on the exit. We've seen that from quite a number of athletes today. Just getting pushed too far out to the right on the exit of the high toy bow. Misses the red gate and his race is run. Here it comes again. 
gets the initiation right not quite far enough over the front part of the ski so as the ski straightens out the radius of the turn increases and increases and essentially gets away from the skier tough one for the guys with the prosthetic on the right side you know difficult to get the balance and get the strength down on that ski Arvin Skoglund of Sweden next to go 18 years of age first Paralympic winter games started skiing six or seven years ago 1.92 off the pace at the first split and the, the second split is now 5.02 and he is out and down on the entrance to the high throw ball and he will register a DNF Have another look at yeah, this one. Yeah, another quick look. It's a bit of a pattern. We've seen the same same fate before quite a number of the skiers. If you can't quite get the ski switched back and get that left foot, the left ski underneath your body, things happen very quickly there. Martin Franz of Slovakia on track. A fifth Paralympic Winter Games for him. And the best result for the 37 year old came in the giant slalom. Uh, well, 2006, 2014, and 2018, he was fourth on uh, those three occasions, retiring after Beijing. Big motivation for him is to medal, as you would imagine, having finished fourth on three occasions. But uh, the giant slalom later on in the programme is probably going to be his shot. Yeah, I think the course conditions will work a little too hard against him. A decent top section, though, from Martin Franz. He gets that switch really quickly done. He's come in here nice and smooth now. He's, he bled some time off, some speed off from under the skis on the entry to High Toy Bowl. Oh, not able to take advantage of that good line. Gets drifted low in these following turns. A very bold tactic. He likes to take risks, does Martin France, but not quite sure that those have paid off. No, nope, doesn't look like it. 5.11 now, sadly, for him. The penultimate racer on this uh, men's Super G standing competition. And France is not giving up just yet. Gets that body as low as he possibly can. Keeps it tight on the gate on the final jump. Pressing and pressing for the line. 25th position for him. 7.68 off the pace. Marcus Nilsson Grasto of Norway with bib number 49 is the last athlete out of the start hut in this men's Super G standing. 1.52 off the pace at the first split for the 20 year old in his first Paralympic Winter Games from Oslo. And that is now six seconds off the pace. Shaky entry to the turn on to the high toy bow, but managed to get the ski back under control. It's taken a little, sapped a lot of his energy, I would say, though, not able to get the following two or three turns as clean as he would like. Good tactical ski, though, good placement of the skis on the entry here to this final curve, and that allows him a nice, smooth, and safe run out into the flatter canyon section. So here comes Nilsson Grasto of Norway last game for him tucks for the line and he'll stop the clock at 1.21.04 and a 30th position for Nilsson Grasto in this men's Super G standing So here are the final standings in the men's Super G standing, and it's Liang Jingyi from the People's Republic of China that wins China's first ever para-alpine skiing medal in the men's competition. Marcus Salker of Austria is second, and uh, Alexi Guimond of Canada, who was fourth four years ago, is third this time around, and uh, 30 of our 39 races got to the bottom of the hill.
the Beijing 2022 pair of Olympic Winter Games medalists for the men's Super G standing event. So the recognition ceremony now for the men's Super G standing event. And Marcus Saga, the world champion in Super G, will lead out the medalists. Silver medal for him this time. So go with the silver medal. from China. <laughs> Alexi Guimond of Canada, the bronze medalist in the men's Super G standing, his second Paralympic Winter Games medal. Michael Salka. The champion from 2014, silver medalist in 2022. But the Paralympic champion for Beijing 2022, it's Liang Jingyi, who becomes China's first ever male Paralympic gold medalist in skiing. Congratulations to Yang Jing Yi, the 19-year-old, with the gold medal around his neck. He'll get that later on today. The men's Super G sitting race will wrap up proceedings on day two of these Beijing 2022 Paralympic Winter Games at the Yansing National Alpine Skiing Center. And the High Tuo Mountain basking in uh, warm sunshine today. Here is the start list. And there are 28 competitors from 16 National Paralympic Committees at the top of the track. No medalists from the 2018 race in the field. Kurt Oatway, the champion, not here. Andrew Kirker and Frédéric Francois also not racing. But uh, all eyes may be on the world champion from Lillehammer earlier in the year, number 54, Jeroen Kamschru from the Netherlands. Can he add the Paralympic title to his world title? <laughs> Gong Zhao Lin from the People's Republic of China will get us underway in this men's Super G sitting race. The 32-year-old in his first major championships took up the sport in 2017 and a chance to see the whole track hit. Uh, this is a challenging track and I think it's going to be doubly so for this men's sitting category. So we have a man with local knowledge, if you like, on course first of all, so shouldn't hold too many surprises. Oh, just as I say that, first of our fallers in the men's sitting category, just before the critical turn into the high toy bowl, ski flipped sideways just as it got light in the transition from one edge to the other, and Gong Xiaolun was the first faller in the men's sitting category, looks to be a little caught up in the net, let's have a quick look back, ski just ran out, Moved the upper body a little bit too far inside, too early in the transition from one edge to another. The ski straightens out and uh, balance is gone in an instant as a result. Super G in many ways is about finding a, a rhythm to make your ski, make your skis move from left to right in a way that matches well with the pattern of the gates. There's never an, an ideal match because of the changing terrain, changing nature of the hill. And that really combined with the fact that there's, remember, only a course inspection, no training runs in Super G. That's really what makes this one of the most difficult disciplines, particularly for the early starters.
So disappointment for Gong Xiaolin. It's, uh, safely off the track. So some last minute preparation going on at the uh, top of the hill. So the wand comes across the start gate. And Keno Akira of Japan, the next to go. Keno Akira of Japan, next on track, the uh, Super G champion from the Paralympic Winter Games in 2014 and he won the gold medal also in 2010. So uh, an athlete who likes the speed events, can he lay down a marker here for those at the top of the track? First few turns, to my judgment, were more or less flawless. Further down here really is going to be the make or break section through the remainder of today's competition. Some lovely turns. And here comes the entrance to high throw ball, but he's down and out. You know, despite all those years of experience, the course getting the better of him. And exactly the same section as Gong went down on. It's caused lots of problems throughout the day, and I think more problems to come. The set of the course and the breakup of the snow conditions conspiring against the skiers. Very difficult for the athletes to get the turn initiated cleanly here in the entrance to High Toy Bow because it's very flat where they switch from one edge to another. So without a bit of steepness to help them, a bit of fall line, a bit of gravity pulling them down the hill, it's difficult to load up that front part of the ski and get the ski bending smoothly, which is what develops the carve and brings you strongly, safely, powerfully into a, into a turn. The absolute skill of the Super G skier. <laughs> Nicola Biscay Hudson from Chile, next in the start hut. Biscay Hudson on track, the 23-year-old in his second Paralympic Winter Games. Also a para-tennis player, played the sport internationally as well, but started skiing as a 17-year-old. And uh, carried the flag for Chile at the opening ceremony here in Beijing, 2022. And some good opening turns from Biscay Hudson. With uh, no time to compare him to as our first two races haven't made the finish. Setting himself up early, an interesting tactic, taking a bit more space before he comes to this crucial section just to give himself more control over the ski. The pays off for Biscay Hudson, he's the first of their sit skiers to make it into the high joy bowl. Uh, now gets to work. Bringing that swing from left to right, now trying to generate more pace, more momentum to get him out as fast as possible with as much ground speed as possible from this turn as he runs out into the canyon. 55.85 will be the time that everyone will look to try and better at that point. With the 23-year-old, who was ninth in the slalom in 2018, doing a good job to set the marker in this men's Super G sitting race. Off the final jump, and the time to beat now, 117.06. He leads the Paralympic Super G race. A great tactical approach from the Andorran skier. Look at this, sets up nicely, gives himself extra space and dives into the high toy bowl. I wouldn't say in total control, but uh, with enough control to keep himself upright. 
Suzuki Takeshi from Japan next on ch on course, the slalom champion from 2014, when he was also third in the downhill. But uh, he won his slalom gold in Sochi the very day, 17 years on from the accident, and resulted in him losing his legs. A remarkable yeah, twist of fate. Suzuki, another very experienced competitor, as we're saying, should have a strong tactical plan for this section of the course. There you go, around that red gate, that's where you have to start setting up, keep those arcs moving from your left to right, and now bring everything you've got to the party and arc it out. There you go, that's how to ski this section. Really nice series of turns, complete control, and very, very quick by Takeda Suzuki. What a turn to come into the ball, and the 0.23 green light is now a 2.42 light because that was exquisite from Suzuki in the high throw ball. Yeah, Takeda Suzuki. Try to just stay calm, keep the ski running smoothly here through the gully, uh, through the canyon rather, and carry that momentum all the way to the line. Off the final terrain change, 117.06, Suzuki Takeshi touch for the line, 0.33, he lost an awful lot of time, over two seconds through the canyon section. <laughs> Risky business out there. Here's the exit from High Toy Bowl and the entry to the canyon. You can't really fault that. But uh, something else I just want to mention, the snow here is getting very wet, so the ski technicians will really have their work cut out up at the top on final prep. Jeroen Kampscher of the Netherlands on track, the world champion from the Super G sitting in Lillehammer in January of this year, his second Paralympic Winter Games. But he was a gold medalist in Super Combined in 2018, and he has the green light at the first time split in this men's sitting Super G in Beijing. Yeah, contrary, is a master of extreme technique. He can lay the rig over onto steeper angles than most. He too has got the message, starts setting this section up very early. Chooses to go a little straighter here. Oh, just touches the blue line and by the skin of his teeth gets that entry into the high toy bowl. Strong run here. Can he hang on to the pace though through these swinging left to right turns? Here comes the exit. 1.58, the right side of the clock coming into the bowl and 1.99 coming out. But we see, or we saw Suzuki, our leader, lose two seconds through this section of the track. So Kamsha needs to keep this as quick as he possibly can. It looks a little bit quicker than Suzuki through that section, but 116.73, and Kamsha is inside, he's inside by miles. Oh, my word. Kamsha finds two and a half seconds through the canyon. Amazing skiing down through the high toy bowl. Hopefully we'll get another quick look at it. The reverse angle here. Look how deep he drops his hips into the turn. Look at the angles he makes here to get the ski carving. Jesper Pedersen from Norway, who was the silver medalist at the World Championships in Lillehammer. At the start of this year, he was the only gold medalist for Norway in Pyeongchang, but he's got a really stiff time to try and beat with Kamsher, but he's already 0.48 the right side of the clock. Wow, that's strong stuff up at the top. Ski obviously running very well on those top turns for Pedersen. He's a little late here, just has to gradually bring the line back. You can't make a massive line adjustment between one gate and the other in Super G without paying a heavy price. He's done a good job here, and this looks very quick indeed. Well, 1.32 as he gets it sideways into the ball. Strong here, though, on the recovery. A deliberate drift there, followed by a punch. 
classic Super G skiing here from Jesper Peterson. And he's coming out of the high toy bow very quickly. Sets it up wide for the long double gate. Running now towards the canyon with maximum speed under his skis. Well, Kramsher's time under real threat. 1.2 the right side of the clock. It was a different tactic to Kramsher from Pedersen. But at the moment, it looks like it's paying off for the Norwegian. The two 22-year-olds, Kramsher and Pedersen, going head-to-head -head here for provisional gold medal. 1.12.25. Pedersen crosses the line and he betters Kramsher's time by two and a half seconds. What a ski that is! Wow, he's as surprised as anybody. That really, that was good. Kramsher was excellent, but Pedersen had the jump on him. Amazing skiing from all of these racers. But right now, Pedersen shows the cleanest set of edges through that crucial high toy bowl series of turns. Determination written all over his face. There's the drift. Timed it to perfection. More than a second on the flat. <laughs> Yang Zilu from the People's Republic of China, just 17 years of age. In his first Paralympic Winter Games, has been sit skiing now for six years. And the first time split is 0.85 off the pace of Pedersen, our leader. Liang. Nice turns here, just a little bit late on the beginning of these slightly straighter turns as he comes down towards the end of this section. So the adjustments, I think, will have cost him a bit of time. The line not quite as smooth as some of the competitors before him. He's going for a straighter entry to the high toy bowl. He manages to make it stick, but a bit of a gap to still work on for him. 4.18 off the pace coming into the high toe ball. Decent turns through the middle and uh, towards the exit of the ball. 5.89 grows by uh, 1.71 seconds through that section. Yang, the 17-year-old, who will get so much from this experience over the finish jump and he will stop the clock in 118 dead 8.31 off the pace and he will slide into fifth for the time being bit of a drift here running a bit wide that's where some of the time was lost but you can see from the focus on the athlete's face he's not letting the mistake put him off Igor Sikorski from Poland, the next to challenge. 31 years of age, third Paralympic Winter Games for him. And his best was a bronze medal in the giant slalom in 2018. He also has medals from the World Championship in uh, slalom and giant slalom. So the technical disciplines at the end of the para-alpine schedule the uh, stronger disciplines for Sikorsky. Nice work through the middle part by Sikorsky, keeping it on the clean line. The warming temperatures, the dust and sand that's in the snow. You can see the snow's getting quite dirty now as it softens. But still, Sikorsky's got other things to worry about right now. Didn't get the entry to the, the high toy bowl just as he would have liked, and like a few others today, finds himself sliding down through the high toy bowl on his side rather than arcing down from edge to edge. He didn't have a constant pressure on that edge, did he? No, it's, again, it's, it's, it's difficult. It's difficult to keep the keep the rig on the snow. There we go. The slow mo picks it up perfectly. Recovering from here, the compression on the rig is massive. Then, as the spring extends again, to try to get all of those dynamics back under control in the blink of an eye and get some direction to get you into the high toy bowl. You know, it's an almost impossible task. Sikorsky almost managed to pull it off, but ultimately the ski breaking away and uh, him sliding out. And then another, a growing list of did not finishes on our statistics list here.
Fortunately, though, gets out set on its own steam. That's our leaderboard. Look at that, seven seconds separating first and third. So big, big gaps for those athletes at the top of the hill to try and aim for. and Kamsher at the bottom. This is René Di Silvestro, who was third behind those two at the World Championships in Lillehammer. René Di Silvestro of Italy, the next to challenge the 25-year-old the bronze medalist in the men's Super G sitting race at the World Championships in Lillehammer in 2002. And the ski just picked up a bit more than he thought, and he had to bash the gate out of the way with his outriggers. Yeah, he got a bit more than he was bargaining for there in their opening turns. It's not put him off, though. Smooth execution from De Silvestro. Most solid here. 4-2 off the pace at the first split. The second one coming just on the bottom of the run run jump here 33.41 and he is 1.43 off the pace there's two bites at the cherry going into the high toy bowl manages just to make the ski bite well or hold well on the second part of that turn so finds the rhythm finds the line through here 50.24 and he is 1.17 the wrong side of the clock Verzi is on the podium at the moment, so this is a good run from Di Silvestro. He's taken the risks up the top, he's been pretty well rewarded for them. Now he has to sit tight, stay calm, keep the ski running smoothly, now drop into the finish pitch. 109.69 is the gold medal time, 112.25 the silver medal time, and he's gone into second place. Di Silvestro pushes Kramschner down one. The early gate that caused him a little bit of trouble. It didn't disturb his focus or concentration because uh, plenty more risks and some amazing skiing being delivered lower down. And the man he's pushed down, congratulating him. Let's go. Floris Meyer of the Netherlands next in the start hut. Meyer, 32 years of age. First Paralympic Winter Games for him. Fourth in the downhill of the World Championships in January this year. So perhaps someone that can put Pedersen's time under a little bit of pressure. But 0.53 to find after the first couple of turns. Yeah, plenty of competitive skiers left in this competition. And plenty of drama to be delivered as well, I can guarantee that. Scholes Mayer coming in here with a lot of pace. Takes a bit of extra space to compensate for his pace he's carrying and sets the line here, preparing for the entry to high joy bowl. Here it comes, goes wide, sweeps it in, gets held wide by the momentum though. And difficult to find the more direct line on the steeper parts. It comes through the middle of this section. Keeps the work rate up though, and keeps that speed arcing from left to right. Here's the final split. What does it give him? 3.91 to find. Uh, the podium is two and a half seconds. And there, a couple of gates from home. 9.69, that's come and gone. The podium also has come and gone. And fourth position, 5.98 off the pace. Yeah, good work, good tactical play, good choice of line by Flores Mayer, but in the end, not able to mix it up with the top spots, but a solid run nonetheless, and some pretty deep angles on the reverse view here down through the high toy bowl. 
Oh. Nils de Langen from the Netherlands, the next on track, his second Paralympic Winter Games. His best performance in a Paralympic Winter Games was an eighth in the Super Combined in 2018, but he has got medals at the World Champs. And the technical discipline, second in Giant Slalom in 2019 and third in Slalom in 2022. Yeah, good top split section as well, 0.59, the gap shown on our initial intermediate time. Keeps that momentum pretty solid underfoot going across the middle part of the flats. The golden turns coming up here, one final check on the time. 1.61 as he comes into the ball, he's running very late, but he holds on to that arc to make the red gate. Difficult to bring it back though and to try to work on the time. A number of different tactical approaches being displayed on the entry to this crucial section. Delangan choosing for the, the wider line. 1.73 off the pace, but that is, uh, couldn't just shake up the podium here because it's 2.56 between first and third. Delangan with a chance to try and get himself on the podium. Here comes the finish line now, and he's just outside, 2.97. Misses out by 41 hundredths. Yeah, he's pleased with his efforts. I have to say, some of the skiers running very wide on that final turn, uh, just by the rock jump. I think there's time to be had there if some of the coaches were to say, you can go more direct, you can save maybe five, ten metres of travel across the snow, which could translate to the best part of a second, in my opinion. Li Qi Yang from the People's Republic of China, 24 years of age, in his first Paralympic Winter Games, and he's off and he's looking pretty relaxed at the top. Time to say hello to the camera before he launches out the start gate. Smooth on the top, yeah, decent split. Not as dynamic and uh, aggressive a line as we've seen some of the previous sit skiers take. Keeping the execution of these turns smooth, linking them up nicely. Well, that's an important part of the skill set in Super G. Now it's about commitment. 4.9 off the pace of Pedersen. Leader. And yeah, not able to get the ski switched quickly enough underneath the rig to get a, a really aggressive or a, a quicker line to tries to compensate by going in more direct on the final double, but doesn't manage to get purchase on the double turn. 7.81 now, the deficit for Li Xiang. Ski running a little slowly, I would say, across these uh, softer, damper, lower sections. 109.69, ninth for the time being, 10.99 off the pace. New Zealand in the start hut, Corey Peters in his third Paralympic Winter Games. Come on, Corey! He was a bronze medalist in the downhill in 2018. He was a world champion in this discipline back in 2015. What can Peters achieve on day two in the Super G? And 0.47 off the pace of Pedersen at the first time split for Corey Peters. Smooth, accurate execution on those top turns. Keeps Peters in contention. The pace is picked up now. You can see that from the way the ski is chattering even through these straighter sections. Corey Peters coming in here really hot. Nice and smooth turns from the New Zealand He's a quarter of a second off the pace, and that's an excellent entry into the high toy ball. Now just to get early onto the following turns as well, keeping it going. This is good through the main part of the bowl itself. It's all going to be down to this final turn and how he executes. 
takes an aggressive line, goes for it. And he's two tenths off the pace of Pedersen, Corey Peters. Can he try and find this time through the canyon section of this Super G track? Four gates from home now for Peters. 109.69, the time of Jesper Pedersen, our leader. And here comes Peters now for the line, and he stops the clock. Second point four seven. The wrong side of the clock from Peters' point of view, but he ran Pedersen really close. What a job done there by Corey Peters. Great turns, you know, one or two in the sec middle section, maybe a little too straight, and he did get pushed very wide on the entry to the high toy goal, but every part of his skill set used to its max there. What a great run oh, to I take provisional silver. Bib number 63, Ravi Drugan of Ravi. the United States of America, 32 years of age. First Paralympic Winter Games. There's a mono skier. He took part in four editions of the X Games, winning bronze in 2015. But here in Chang, he is 1.05 off the pace at the first split. Dugan getting good angles here. His rig set up very well, I would say. Suspension working smoothly and but powerfully across these uh, little rollers on the flats. 33.41. 3.99 off the pace as he enters the ball. He's done a good job on the entry. Could have switched a little bit earlier for the red gates, but now straightening the line up. He knows he can forward to take a chance or two down here to try to build up some speed as he approaches the entry to the flat section. Harrison's time, 5.87 off the pace. Mm. Risky there, getting the ski very flat towards the exit of the, or the end of the exit turn, the ski drifting from left to right. Ever so slightly, it's a good way to get him gliding, but it's a, it's a risky tactic at the same time. 109.69 has come and gone. And Dugan will slot into provisional. Tenth, 9.1 off the pace for the American. Great shots here showing the commitment shown by all of the sit skiers, you know. Just one, one edge to hold them up in each of those turns. You have to be so confident. Mori Taiki from Japan, next on track, 41 years of age, made his Paralympic Winter Game debut in Salt Lake City way back in 2002, 20 years ago. He's got four silvers to his name in giant slalom in 06, downhill in 10, and Super G in 14, and the downhill again in 2018. Absolutely flawless on this top section. Taiki Mori doing a great job here, clearing these gates as if he's on the slalom course. Going very deep into this turn, it straightens it up, just a little line adjustment. As to the certain of this one, oh, he's more than empty. Wow, six tenths on the wrong side of the clock. It said before these games, he's determined to bring home a goal, having finished in second place on four occasions. Amazing scheme down through the high tall goal. Both the athlete and the equipment pushed to the max. He gets the reward. And he gets the green light, nine one hundredths of a second. He's given himself every opportunity of taking his first Paralympic gold medal. And he's looking quick through the canyon section, but is it quick enough? 109.69, the time of Pedersen, our leader from Norway. And here comes Murray now, tucking for the line. And he is outside yeah. it, and he's third, point nine two off the pace. Wow. That was some skiing through the high toy bowl. Ski prep perhaps letting him down just a little as the snow gets warmer on that lower flatter section. David Allen Williams from the United States of America. Next out the start hub with bib number 65. He's 42 years of age in his first major championships. 
He was due to race at the World Champs in January, but sustained concussion in a training run, so didn't start any of the races. Pushing it to the max here. Into high toe goal. He's a little out of shape in terms of the race line, just as he came to that last split. But uh, not letting that boom off. Oh, but tries to get too ambitious in the middle part of high toy bowl the line just a bit too direct to be able to hold on to he knew he had to take risks following the mistakes a little bit earlier on but ultimately they didn't pay off for david allen williams and he shows on our stats as a dnf does not finish no harm done though other than a dent to the pride let's a quick quick look back this is where he's running a little wide so he goes in extremely hot very direct to the entry to the high toy bowl as a consequence a couple of turns later he's still on that direct line and just cannot hang on to the carve and goes down on his side Peters in the middle, but it's Pedersen who's actually in the gold medal slot on the right of screen in the light blue jacket. Relaxed at the top of the hill. Oh, yeah, come back. Right now, and switch on shortly. Yeah, that's the calm before the storm, you could see. Current standings in this men's Super G sitting race. Pedersen from Peters and Mori. <laughs> Chen Liang from the People's Republic of China, 24 years of age first paralympic winter games and trying to chase down the time of jesper pedersen our leader it's already nearly a second off the pace Good job through the tail section of the silk roads by chen Keeping things going smoothly. It's important. I've mentioned calm before the storm is a little bit like that on this section, but this is where things really start to get busy. Sets himself, does a bit of an extra turn to set himself up. 1.84 off the pace. Good line coming inside all those ruts. That's because he's not going quite as quickly as those before him. Doesn't manage to regain the ideal line through the middle part. He's keeping decent pace though, so let's pay close attention to the next split. 5.15, the wrong side of the clock. Ninth position at that point of the challenge. It's the shoulders down, he tries to keep that ski quiet and running smoothly across these slower, flatter sections. 109.69, Pedersen's time, that's come and gone. Chen, 117.41, tenth for the time being. <laughs> Lou Brat, the man of France, the 26-year-old in his first Paralympic Winter Games out of the hut. off the tail end of the Silk Road. The start intervals between the athletes has been reduced just to get us through the field. So we're not able to show the whole run. There's 0.71 down the first split, 3.55 at the second. Trying to get early purchase in these turns in the high toy bowl, but leaving himself too little space really to get the ski rolled up smoothly to initiate a smooth and strong, powerful, gradual carve. It's a shorter line, but has it gained in time? No. No. The 3.55 is now 6.68. And the uh, bond of France. Nine point six 
6-9 won't be beaten and 10th for the time being for the Frenchman. All right, Pellet of Switzerland, the next to challenge. 39 years of age, his second round of Winter Games, his best finish, his 13th in slalom in 2018, but uh, missed last season with a fractured wrist. So he's going to be aiming for Paris in the Summer Paralympic Games, and he wants to try and take part in the Paris shooting. Drifting a little through the middle part of the high toy ball. He had a good good entry turn. He got pushed a little wide and then still the ski getting away from him in the lower part. It's hard to emphasize how difficult technically these turns are, which get harder and harder, more and more difficult as this whole section develops. He pulls himself now, just stay calm down across the flats here. Don't lose any extra time and cut in as tight as he dares on this final curve and head for the line. Pellet off the final jump. He'll stop the clock in 118.54. He'll slide into 13th for the time being. Aaron Ewan from New Zealand, the 25 year old, in his first. Paralympic Winter Games. He was due to race in Pyeongchang in 2018, but fractured his hip in December of 2017. And uh, 0.85 off the pace at the first time split. And he will find himself now 3.61 off the pace as he enters the high throw ball, but he's a little wide in the line. Good execution, and the times, I think, you know, reflect pretty well for a fairly inexperienced skier. He's certainly taking a brave few sets of turns down through here, trying to chop the line to save some time. Rig working well for him as he sweeps around that final curve in the high toy bowl. 5.71 is time split at the bottom of the ball. And Ewan, a couple of gates from home now. The jump heads for the finish and will stop the clock in one 1604 eighth position for Ewan. And he's going to be delighted with that. Pavel Babasek from the Czech Republic next on track, a 37 year old in his second Paralympic Winter Games. So plays para golf and took part in the 2016 European Para Golf Championships where he finished an incredible in the 11th place. 5.03 off the pace Ooh. and getting some pace into the high throw ball. Oh, gets away oh, with that one. I don't know how he, he, he found a lucky little pile of soft snow, but for the second time of asking, well, Lady Luck's still with them, but uh, deserted him somewhat. That was some escape he managed up at the top of the high toy. Oh, Bam Busek living on the ragged edge. Keeps it going, though. That fault is commitment. Well, the heart would have been in the mouth. Yeah, time's gone by, but, you know, to say these, these guys and girls in the 60s in these conditions today, they're... Everybody deserves a medal, to be quite honest. It's, uh, you have to be as brave as a lion to tackle this hill, that's for sure. So Bamasek down in one piece. He was down a couple of times on the snow, but he's across the finish line to set a time. <laughs> Sam Tate of Australia, the next to challenge in his second Paralympic Winter Games. 30 years of age, and the best finish in the Paralympic Winter Games of 2011 in the downhill in 2018. It's a high toy goal, deficit 2.78, that's pretty respectable for these later runners, Sam Tate keeping the work rate up, oh, just a bit too ambitious there and just laid the rig on its side too much. Hit the gate very, very hard, and as a result, the ski just pops out from underneath him. And uh, yeah, despite his best efforts, he's not going to finish this one. That's a shame. 
Well, got himself upright, but yeah, just came in far too tight on that blue gate. Yeah, he'd run himself into a line that he really couldn't avoid doing that. He would have got pushed too far below the gate if, he'd, if he had managed to sort of set the carve up. So he just had to try and chop this off and hope for the best. But unfortunately, it didn't work out. But again, you know, that's a good indication of the, the level of difficulty, the level of risk that these athletes have to take in Super G. The pace very, very high, something like 80 kilometers per hour down through that section and the turn swinging right across the hill, something like eight or 10 meters across the hill between each turn and only 40 or 50 meters between the actual gates to make that direction change. You can see up, up on the, uh, the lines on the snow, the tracks on the snow, high up by the top blue line. That's really where you want to be ideally to be able to carry your speed. And you can see Sam Tate's line in there, the one just behind the course worker who's putting the flag back on, coming in just way too hot. No way he was getting away with that. Six remain at the top of the hill. And just going to have to wait while the gate is repaired in the middle of the high twelve ball. It's good to go. So uh, that will be relayed back up to the top and. Uh, Start referee. And, uh, relay that to the athletes. So we'll get ourselves underway. There he is, Sawano Hiroshi, on the right of the uh, start hut. Pascal Christen of Switzerland, the 29-year-old, in his first Paralympic Winter Games. He's the next out of the game, he joined the Swiss Army High Performance Programme last year, one of the first wheelchair athletes to be asked. And let's see how he fares in this men's Super G sitting race. 11.6, the first split time, and he's at seven of a second off the pace of Pedersen. Yeah, nothing wrong with the skiing, technically speaking. Just could maybe have just gone a little straighter on those top gates. It's not very well. It's very easy for me to say that from the commentary position, but uh, out there in the heat of the moment, the athlete has to only they can only take the risks that they they feel capable or brave enough of pulling off. It's a shame because that was another good split there that we saw just as he came across that uh, the final little check there on the entry to the high toy boat. It's the ski underneath him manages to arrest the fall, but yeah, you know, once again that setting up to try to get this right hander. The sweet point on the entry to the turn, it's just gone by him, so he runs out into that soft stuff. The ski's not going to react the right way, and down he goes on his side. It really has turned out to be the, the crucial turn in this competition today in every single one of the categories for many where the race has uh, been won or lost. So the gate marshals are keeping busy. <laughs> yeah, it's a good, good, good way to describe the, this section here. You know, you can see how, how wide across the hill the guys and girls have to, have to ski down through the whole of the high toy bowl there. And as a consequence, that's that's really why that entry turn is so critical. If you can't set yourself up for those following turns in that very difficult entry turn, then you're really going to be in trouble. So uh, the money turns, the coaches will call those sections, that's for sure. Han Sang Min from Korea out on track, 42 years of age, made his Paralympic Winter Games debut in 2002. Got his only podium then as well, he was second in the GS. And, uh, missed 2014 because of his shoulder injury, but uh, was the first athlete from Korea to win a medal in alpine skiing at the Paralympic Winter Games with that silver in the giant slalom.
Yeah, and this is, uh, I would suggest, maybe a, a high-speed reconnaissance of the race piece for the, the forthcoming giant slalom con contest for Stan. He knows he's not in contention for the uh, for the medal positions here. Ooh, a couple of bites of that entry. Yeah, really, really challenging conditions now as this, the snow gets more and more chopped up and uh, changeable from one turn to the next. But Han keeping it nice and clean, nice and calm through that final run into the canyon section. Han Sang Min. Three gates from home. And he will stop the clock. Yan Heiling from the People's Republic of China, the next to go, 19 years of age, and has been Paris skiing for just four years. Another skier taking a, a slightly conservative line on the top section. Skiing it solidly, but without a huge amount of risk from gate to gate. Coming off the end of Silk Road now. Keeping the line as tidy as he can, staying on the central part of the ideal racing line. We've seen this soft snow building up on the outside of where the majority of skiers have run, so he really wants to avoid that, particularly coming in here. Oh, good job, really good job here on the end of the high tide ball. Oh, he's down. Oh, oh, he's... oh. oh wow. that's such a shame. He, was, he got, kind of got stuck on the edge there, unable to release the turn and readjust the direction. The airbag doing its job. He's well tangled up in the B netting. The smaller net that's designed to gradually slow the skier down. Definitely have a bit of a hold here while they untangle him. Just communicating with the gate marshal there. Let's keep our fingers crossed that there's no injury sustained. Uh, it looks to be OK, that's good. That was a big hit, really big hit there into the airbag. And again, you know, when the when you see the guys and girls executing smoothly down through High Toy Bowl, it, it takes away from the actual velocity that they're traveling. It's only really when something goes wrong that you get a proper realization of the pace these uh, athletes or skiers are, are carrying underfoot as they come down through this section. It's not just turny, it's, it's really steep in there as well, so massively challenging hill. So they managed to unpick uh, Jan. Yeah, a quick check from the medical staff, he seems to be okay and that gives the course workers a bit of time to properly repair the B netting. These these poles have to go into the snow, minimum really of 30 centimetres. Let's have another look at uh, where things started to go awry from. I think in this turn he gets a little bit stuck again, drifts wide, hooks up in that soft snow. There's no chance to change the direction and he runs out of space really quickly indeed. It's a very narrow piece down yeah. through there. But uh, you feel yourself if there's a place to go down, it's into that airbag because uh, the uh, netting can uh, be a hard place to fall into. But yeah, good to see him come down. Yeah, he's, he's, he looks to be OK, so hopefully he'll be back for the remaining competitions. And as I say, the course workers do have time. We don't have so many left in the field, so it's very important that that B netting is replaced properly and the the poles are drilled into the snow to the right depth it's all designed to take the energy out of the crash and gradually arrest the fall of the skiers should they happen to go um, go off to the side of the course and into either the b netting as 
as Jan did, or into the A netting, as we've seen a few folk do already earlier today. Three remain at the top of the hill. Enrique Plante of Argentina is the first to go, and he's just going through the track <coughs> in his mind. <laughs> A few more minutes. A couple more minutes just while we get the netting. Here we go. Here's a close up of what I was talking about. The, the gate has to go in, as I say, at least 30 centimetres, the pole rather, and then the netting has to be firmly affixed to those little hoops. And that, by design, is what takes the energy out of the spill and brings the athlete safely or relatively safely to a halt. Gone are the days of having uh, straw bales <laughs> at the side of the hill. It's so very technical as it should be the protection at the side of the mountain. So really communication key, all different areas of the piece linked together so everyone has a clear picture in their mind of what is happening on the track and of course marshals working as quickly and efficiently as they can Two of our last three runners have finished. Top three are copy. 75 in the gate. Okay. So those are our medalists. And Argentina will be hoping to disrupt that podium. Enrique Plante of Argentina, the 39-year-old in the start hut, carried the flag at the opening ceremony here in Beijing. The Paralympic Winter Games for him. Best finish, 11th in the slalom in 2018. Plante runs a little wide on a couple of those opening turns. We're running out into the soft snow, and that's reflected in the split time. These are better turns here as he's got the pace built up down through the Silk Road, through the roller coaster section here. And now he just needs to keep it clean. So important now to stay in the middle part of the ideal line. He's in a little straight here, I would say. But gets the entry to the high toy ball turn set up well. 85 kilometers an hour as he comes into the high toy ball. Good work from the Argentinian. Great turns down through here. He's certainly been working on his techniques a little while since I've seen him speak competitively, but Enrique doing a good job down through the high toy ball there. He can be pleased with those. 4.1 off the pace, currently inside the top 10. So a great run here from Enrique Plante of Argentina. 109.69, our leader's time. And Plante. Can he sneak himself inside the top 10? 117.06 required to do that, and he's going to do that. He is. Amazing. Good ski. He's going to be delighted with this. You know, the Argentinian program is one of the smallest, and if you get a top 10, great. Brian Rowland of Canada, the penultimate racer in this men's Super G sitting race. First Paralympic Winter Games for Rowland. He took up Paris in 2017 and began competing in 2018. And the following year, in 2019, he won the adaptive category in the Canadian Wake Surfing Championships. So he's got the moves. He has. <laughs> Good skiing, Roland again. We saw him perform well in on day one in the downhill and uh, following the same pattern here. Day two, Super G going well for him so far. 
This is the, 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 the trickiest section just coming up. Let's see how he deals with him. You see the high toy ball. Oh, rides that out nicely. Oh, he's late oh, now. Oh, yeah, he's he, very did, late. he got pushed low and uh, just ran himself out of space, really, to make the red the the red gate turn um, in in some kind of carved fashion but he's managed to you know great recovery skills he's managed to pick up the pace again the damage has been done so he just needs to keep calm and bring this one home safely from here oh, he's still inside the top 10 but i have a feeling too much speed has been taken off because of that error in the middle of the ball and uh, not much you can do about it in this section just has to sit and wait for the next pitch to come here it is and Roland will stop the clock 10th 6.48 off the pace this is what might have been for Roland Fujiwara Tetsu of Japan the last racer on course 41 years of age in his first major championships 0.72 off the pace at the first split. Respectable from Fujiwara. Good turns, getting good deep angles through the tail end of the sick road section. Now the pace starts to hotten up as the pitch increases. Move quickly from edge. Oh, he's okay. just trying to set up there, but the snow, softening snow, not giving him the purchase he was looking for. That was unfortunate because he was, like a few of the guys before him, he was skiing a good tactical game plan, I would say. He'd realised where the difficult sections were and he was setting himself up well for it, but unfortunately running into that soft snow at the edge of the ideal line and the ski not getting enough grip to change the direction for him. Now Fujiwara is out of the men's Super G City. Um, that means... That our podium is confirmed as uh, Fujiwara makes his way down to the bottom of the hill. Disappointment for him, but delight for these three gentlemen here. So the final result of the men's Super G sitting race at Beijing 2022. And Jesper Pedersen of Norway is the Paralympic champion. Corey Peters of New Zealand takes the silver medal. And Mori Taki of Japan, the bronze medal as 20 of the 28 racers that were on the start list managed to make it to the bottom of the hill. Ladies and gentlemen, let's please welcome the Beijing 2022 Paralympic Winter Games medalist from the men's Sit Ski Super G. So that's, that's the recognition ceremony for this men's Super G sitting race. And uh, well, it's the same podium from the downhill on day one, just shaken up a little bit. It was Peters in gold, Pedersen in silver, and Mori in third on day one. And now it's Pedersen, Peter, Peters, and Mori on day two. But some brilliant skiing from all three once again, who clearly feel very comfortable on this hill. And uh, well, with the super combined to come on day three, the super G section on this hill, and then the slalom section over on the tech hill. Used to say these three won't be amongst the medals uh, there. Medals, Japan. So Mori Taiki of Japan wins a sixth Paralympic Winter Games medal with bronze in the Super G. Corey Peters of New Zealand adds. Super G Silver to downhill gold in Beijing 2018, 2022, sorry. And the Paralympic Winter Games champion in Beijing 2022 for men's Super G sitting, it's Jesper Pedersen. Ladies and gentlemen, show your appreciation for the Beijing 2022 Paralympic Winter Games medalists. An exciting race in the men's 
Super G sitting category. And Pedersen with a really good ski as he adds the Paralympic gold to the Paralympic World Championship silver medal that he won on Homestow in Lillehammer earlier this year. And that wraps up the proceedings on day two here on the Haitou Mountain at the Yansing National Alpine Skiing Centre. Uh, a thrilling day of racing once more. And you can see from the snow in the finish here just how soft it is starting to get. Well, that wraps up scene number two. Here, let me put your names here from Beijing. Super excited to be celebrating the wins of all these incredible athletes. But we would not be without our Ski Centre bathing in March sunshine. As we look out of the start huts of this Super G track, which will be in use again for the Super Combined that takes place on day three of these games. And looking across to the training hill for the speed events here at the uh, Yansing National Alpine Skiing Centre. Well, another brilliant day of para-alpine skiing here at the Yansing National Alpine Skiing Centre. Exciting stuff. You know, no matter which category, which of the athletes you're talking about, it's inspiring, incredible skiing. Everybody bringing it to the limit, whether it's a crash and burn day or a day where an athlete takes home a medal. You have to have such respect for these guys and girls out there on the mountainside. Amazing racing in the Super G. Well, history written at the Yansing National Alpine Skiing Centre on day two of these Paralympic Winter Games, Beijing 2022. Zhang Mengqi of the People's Republic of China becomes their first ever para-alpine gold medalist in the women's Super G standing. And then Liang Jingyi became China's first male para-alpine gold medalist in the men's Super G standing. From everyone here on day two, it's bye-bye.